to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. With your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and cover power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with shop and nail it. Confidence of a hero or a fool. I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. <laughs> That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It is a scientific fact that we are all up in your face. It is time for the one, uh, the only, Protonic Reversal. Welcome to it. Got a, uh, we're back at it. Back at it. After the, I was just saying, this the longest break uh, for a while, and it was two weeks. But considering we was doing something like, you know, a dozen shows every two weeks, uh, it's a bit of a break. So back at it. Somehow the times have gotten weirder, so that's exciting uh, and crazy and anxiety-inducing and thrilling and all of those things. But we are talking to the man, the myth, the legend, my friend, Mr. David Paho. David, welcome to the show, I- dude. Oh, hi Conan. Thanks for thanks for having me. How, how do you like that send up? That was a that was that was some professional radio I was just doing right there, just articulating my thoughts aloud. That's what I do. Yeah, no, that was great. <laughs> um, a lot can a lot has happened in two weeks. I was thinking about that. I was like, man, like time time is just like just everything is moving so fast. It's insane. Well, and it was already weird times to begin with, right? Like, and and then yeah. You- like you have this un- unprecedented, unparalleled time within uh, history, and then you have this other like uprising stuff that's happening, which is which is great. The reasons behind it, of course, are not great, but it's right. just it's so much, it's so yeah. much, and you know it, it, it's it's just one of those things would be a lot, yeah. and to be dealing with both simultaneously or attempting to deal with both simultaneously, it's overwhelming. Yeah. It, it's just insane. Yeah, it's like it's definitely overwhelming. It's like the, the like my main emotion the past couple like couple weeks. I feel like just overwhelmed all the time. Um, Cause uh, yeah, it's just yeah, it's like just hard to to roll with everything. But I I do like I do like change. I embrace change and like you know new like making uh, you know just having new experiences and. Um, changing myself you know like i have to keep like myself in check um so this is so i do uh i do like it but it's just like there there's it's just non-stop you know um and you know i think i don't know if you've noticed but it does seem like people are forgetting like they're or that covid19 is killing people now (laughs) you know (laughs) I'm glad you said it and not me because I, w- I was just like, I'm on the precipice of going on a rant about this basically on a daily basis. And yeah. it's just like, well, here in, in Wisconsin, it seems like people are like, oh, no, we wish that away. Like, it's like when everybody claps their hands and believes in fairies and like the stage production of Peter Pan or, or whatnot. Yeah. Like, they just clap their hands and, uh, you know, oh, the, the pandemic went away. That's what it feels like. It's like, I don't know why yeah. you think the pandemic went away. It didn't. <laughs> and a lot of people, um, like, they don't they know that it still exists, but they just, uh, they doubt it. Um, they doubt that it's ever going to affect them or anybody they know, or they, uh, they think it's all a scam. Like I know like intelligent people that believe that it's, um, you know, this was invented by governments and all these globe, the governments are working together to it's, it's all like a scam to keep us, uh, to like crush small businesses. And- oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, see, so here's what I have to say to that. And this is interesting because like for my day jobs, I've actually worked for the government before. And so what I always right. say to that is, look, man, I've worked for the government and you were giving government entirely too much credit for having their shit together. If you think that that's what I think possibility, because there's no chance that, I mean, Man. Even getting like 
governments and, and all over the world to work together to create yeah. one scam is that would just never happen like no we're, we're we all hate each other too much <laughs> like um maybe maybe hate is a strong word and it's not it's not yeah it's not political bias or anything to say that it's just it's just an acknowledgement of the fact that it's it's difficult to get a lot of things moving at the same time until you do and that's that's momentum yeah. that's uh that's mass right and i feel like things have reached a critical mass for things to have the potential for change it's so irritating that it's i mean these systemic problems have been here for a while they it's not like there's something that just started last month totally yeah but yeah, I, but I also feel like I mean, oh, sorry, but I also feel like uh, I mean, do you think that people would have reacted the same way if they hadn't been cooped up for like seven or eight weeks? You mean uh, with the protests? Yeah. Um, I mean that, that that kind of stuff is hard to say because it, you know it it only happened one way. You know, um, for me, it's hard for me to say, but I do think that that played a. Um, that did play a part, you know, like, cause everybody was dying to get out anyway, you know? Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's like, um, I mean, I think it's great. Like I, I like that there's people, um, you know, that there's, there's strength in numbers. There's no doubt about it. Oh yeah, um, dude. However they got there, I'm, I'm fully down. I just think, I just yeah. think that a ancillary benefit to people being just, tired of being at home right to be like oh oh right. well because it was before hey you're being heroic by staying home you're looking out for others you're in a position that you are you're and that that is still true but then also like hey there's radical injustice in the world which apparently you can accomplish more of with one week of protesting than you can with you know 16 years of electoral politics so yeah 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 you're totally i i think that's a fair uh assessment you know um i think I, everything is is just argued so much now too like uh which is good you know people are uh, like debate is good um but like uh like the the whole COVID 19 like it's actually on my mind right this second because like like 15 minutes before this i or maybe 20 minutes like uh i got a a group text from a, uh, a close, you know, childhood friend that I've been in bands with and stuff. Who's, uh, you know, his, his live in girlfriend partner for a long time is, uh, her coworker just died of COVID-19. He's like, Ugh. I can tell, I can tell he's upset. And then he's like, um, I don't, he's like, I don't care if you guys are interested or not, but, uh, just be careful out there. That's all, you know? Yeah. And I was, and so I've had a, so it's like a, it's directly affecting me, you know, um, uh, like, yeah, on, on a lot of levels. Um, so it, yeah, I had, I had one acquaintance, uh, contract it and get better. And another acquaintance that contracted it and did not get better. Yeah. And yeah. When I think about things like, like, Oh, because it, it's, it's, it was amazing how fast things moved with it. Yeah. Like, it was amazing how, you know, from a 24-hour period, it was like, oh, well, uh, maybe we should cancel one or two of these shows to, like, oh, no, touring at all is, is like, the worst idea possible right now. And, right. And, but just to be working off information that was changing on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. I, I, and yeah. It's, it, and then I, I guess I just gave people too much credit that people wouldn't pull this chosen fact stuff with something yeah. as serious as this. Because for me, I feel like there have been so many movies about global pandemics and, like, you know, whatever, zombie apocalypse is everyone, <laughs> whatever you want to call yeah. it. That it feels like there's a shared set of experiences that, like, ah, we've consumed all this media, we've read these books, we've seen these movies and TV shows, we know the proper way to react. And there just isn't. And yeah. that blows me away. Because that's actually something I'm like, oh, wow. So there's really just no, there's no bottom for this. Yeah, I, I'm. What do you mean? Like the, uh, um, uh, like people f thought that they had a way that that they, they had they were prepared for something like this in some level, but they act, like nobody actually is. Just, I mean, even just the, the act of taking it seriously, you know, like oh, oh like, right. like people they're just like you know trying to pretend as if it's oh, it's no big deal. It's just like the flu. It's like oh, well, actually, it isn't. And even if yeah. it was, it's not necessarily about you. It's about the people close to you. It's about your people that are at risk. It's about your grandparents. It's about your parents. It's about people that you know that 
you know, if they get it, it's not just going to be like, oh, wow, that sucks. I got the COVID. Ha, ha, ha. Let's have a beer. It, it's yeah. like, oh, no, you might actually die. And there's yeah. literal truckloads of people that have. And yeah. the fact that, like, that is somehow like, oh, well, you know, what's, what news sources are you reading? Like, it doesn't matter, idiot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that's the thing. It's like there, there's, there's so much misinformation out there, but there are a couple facts. You know, there are a couple – like, there's, it's so unknown, but there are something like you wash your hands, you keep a distance, you, you know, wearing a mask is – is for others like more than not really for yourself. And uh, like some of those things are like, they're just known. There's like a lot of unknowns and a lot of, you know, I think conspiracy theories and hypotheses, but um, like, you kind of have to stick to the things that are true. And it, you know, it's true that it doesn't just kill like old people or it doesn't kill, it kills athletes, you know, that were in perfect health before this too, you know, Um, and young people. So, uh, it's, um, I don't know. And like, there is a lot of misinformation and I think people end up believing whatever they want to believe, but I'm old fashioned and that like, I just would rather be safe than sorry, (laughs) you know, like, and I have, you know, I have elderly parents and I have kids and, you know, there, I have people I care about that. I, I don't want them something to happen to them. Right. Exactly. And that, and that's such a, that's such a thing that I guess I'm blown away by people. (laughs) My people's lack of capacity for empathy. And I say this as yeah. someone that, like, I'm generally fairly misanthropic. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, me too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, I'm not, like, overwhelming with uh, uh, love and, uh, you know, f- kindness towards my fellow man I- in general. Like, it's not like I'm a, like I'm a right bastard or anything, but, like, you know, it's, right. it's, not, it's not my defining trait. And the fact that so many other people would just be so selfish as to not even consider the fact that their actions could hurt others is just, it's alarming. Yeah. It's alarming. Yeah. This is the country of vanity, man. And like, um, it's like if you tell people to like, just, you know, just stay home out of compassion for the, you know, the whole country, people are like, I am a free man. You cannot tell me what to do. (laughs) You know, I'm a sovereign citizen, sir. You can't say that. Yeah. Yeah. Christ, really? Okay. Yeah, you can suggest it, but I don't have to do it. You know, um, it, yeah, it's a really, it's a, a very vain country. Um, anyway, this is pandemic talk with Paho and Neutral. Yeah, yeah, Thank I'm not sir. a professional. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about music. Yeah, we, um, we probably if you want. should. Yeah, I I know I know. Well, actually, I I don't know more about music, but. I'll pretend I'll pretend that I do. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you know, enough, you know, enough. You yeah. Know, I was sitting there and I was, I was figuring out the, uh, total number of records that between you, me, Vern and Lauren that we all have done. And it was over 80 of them. Oh, I, I can believe that. <laughs> but like over half of them were you, dude. Like you were the one that like, oh. I was like, God damn, because I kept forgetting about ones. I, I would be like, oh, yeah, I forgot he did that. Oh, yeah, I forgot he's on that record. Oh, yeah, cool. I forgot about that. Uh, Man, I forget about records that I've done, too, all the time. <laughs> like somebody pointed out recently there I did a split single with um, Entrance. You know that? Do you know that band Entrance? Um, I'm not sure if I do. It, uh, uh Pause from the Pixies plays with them, uh, oh, but yeah. it, 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 he started off as just a solo. Uh, it's this, his name's Guy Blakesley, and he did a solo thing. But like ages ago, I did a split single with him. I forgot about, and it's only on vinyl. I don't have it's. It, there's no digital copy of it. Um, so, and I somebody brought that song up, and I don't even remember what it sounds like. <laughs> but there's like there's like tons of. Or like I just showed up at somebody else's session and ended up playing drums or something, you know, right. like there's lots, um, there's so many th- like little things that I just don't, I forgot that I played on. So um, I would never want to <laughs> try to figure all that stuff out. But, no, for sure. Uh, but there's also, you know, that's, it, it's, it's shown that you've had a, a long career of being, on doing interesting stuff and doing interesting things. Like, I mean, I think about the fact that, you know, even just like the bands that you've toured with as well, like, you know, you've, you, uh, spent, you spent some time, I forgot, I totally forgot, dude, we talk more than I think people might realize. And I forgot that you played bass in Interpol for a while. Like I just, it just forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That and, was, um, 
Yeah. And well, I was just gonna say somebody, somebody, somebody was talking about Interpol, and I was, and I was like, oh yeah, and I was like, oh yeah, they and they had David Powell on base for for a while, and I'm like, oh yeah, they did. I forgot. About <laughs> I about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, um, it was for one year, uh, but it was, you know, like Carlos was a big part of the band, right. you know, a huge yeah. part of the band. And, and, uh, um, for a lot of people where they associate inter, they associated Interpol with Carlos, you know, cause he was so stylish and visual He's a and big, his baselines were presence as well. Yeah. Big presence. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and so he, when he left the band, I was the first person, like I filled his shoes, which I was like, man, I don't know if I, I if I can replace Carlos, you know, like, um, cause I'm like the exact opposite. I have zero fashion sense. And I like, I like to play with my back to the audience, you know, like I don't, I really, um, I'm not, I can't squeeze into a suit that great. I mean, I will, but, um, you know what I mean? You like it's, pretty good uh, in a suit, but it, you're, yeah. it's, you're a different type of personality than the, than the, guy. yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and it was fine for me. It was a great education. Like I, I loved playing his bass lines and stuff. Um, uh, so it, it all worked out, but it was, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was, there was, those were some big shoes to fill. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's gotta be some pressure, right? Because you know, you're sitting there being like, well, you don't want to do an impression of a guy, but you want yeah, exactly. to you you play something that's true to yourself, but you don't want to necessarily, uh, yeah. you don't want to disappoint people, but you don't want to try to, to act like. Oh yeah, check it out. I'm a square peg fitting in this round hole yeah. over here. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, I had to like interpret it my own way, you know, cuz I I just I like number one I can't really uh ape somebody else exactly. And I don't think and there's only one Carlos and there's only one Pajo, you know, like I got to do it my way. So um but and still honor his what, you know, what he brought to the song. But anyway. Did so did you feel uh did you feel the playing with those dudes? kind of was a fairly natural fit as far as feel and uh, overall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like I really, um, you know, like them as people and just like to hang out with and stuff. And touring was fun. It was just the only reason I couldn't keep doing it is because, um, yeah, I think I, I designated it. I've taken a year off from touring just to, to be a dad, you know? Right. Um, Which it's, important to do (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) it's a big job yeah (laughs) it it is and i i think that like living a life outside of music is important too like i feel like uh musicians that only play for other musicians or 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 only write songs for other musicians like i feel like i i don't want to be that type like i want that there has to be like it has to be the source has to be real life and and that's where the music comes out you know like but if um i don't know if i'm making sense but like if if your whole life is wrapped around music and you don't you've ne- you don't know what it's like to um i don't know like get in an argument with your wife or something you know <laughs> like then it's sort of uh, to me there's like a uh, real life just gives music substance you know um yeah and i mean i think i can when i had martin atkins on and he was talking about when he joined Killing Joke and the Jazz Coleman like had like, <laughs> you know, he was writing songs about how, how first class wasn't very impressive, like, you know, flying. And it was like, right. OK, yeah, that's real relatable, dude. Like you're writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, yeah. Wham. And I think that's. <laughs> yeah. I think that kind of happens to a lot of people, like a lot of. Music, musicians where they get so successful that their whole lifestyle changes and yeah. you know i mean i guess that's natural uh but um i don't know it's like some I, i've always like when stuff starts to get too big that's when i want to leave <laughs> like I, just because it, it becomes intangible to me it's not like i don't like it anymore because it's getting popular or something it's just because i it's getting too comp- complex and i I like. I just kind of like the below the radar vibe. Oh. Well, and well, and, and yeah, another. I just have another terrible example is a uh, you know like the the turn the page sort of songwriting of just like oh it's so hard to be a famous band on tour and it's like well yeah but nobody's forcing you to do this I mean <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> people yeah. want to hear your music and that's nice but you don't have to do it if you don't want to like like uh, like, like a good example of that is. Uh, the Metallica movie, the the one that plays out like a real life Spinal Tap, uh, 
Have you seen that? Some kind of oh, monster, right. right? I saw it in the theater, but uh, I, it was, I remember a lot of it. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's eminently quotable, right? But yeah, I was, I was talking to a friend, and he was just like, yeah, the whole time I just wanted to scream at the screen, break up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah talk about no longer being relatable when he's like yeah. cr- like when you're supposed to be excited when he sells all those paintings for a shitload of money like <laughs> like he's almost in tears and and you're like oh my god i cannot relate at all yeah, you like, know like what? What I, i'm not even happy for you yeah <laughs> like what's Hetfield doing I... he's running around in his classic cars great who gives a crap like i mean like that's yeah. like this is <laughs> or the worst part is he like missed his son's birthday or something because yeah. he was in Russia shooting bears. It was like, you fucking asshole. Yeah. Like, I was, yeah. <laughs> not not oh, exactly a, a relatable situation uh, yeah. to be sure. But anyway, so, so getting, but getting back over to, you know, to all your various bands, it's important to re- realize for folks that only like know from the records. I mean, Slint was like all of the folks that kind of latched on to that band. That was like after... Like Spiderland, you recorded Spiderland, you get and like it was the band was done at that point. Yeah, it was, it was like yeah. well after that. It was, yeah. It was. I mean, um, we like, yeah. It was like we broke up. I think it was literally the next day after. Um, like Brian and I worked on the layout, which is funny because the layout's so simple. But we actually, I feel like we worked pretty hard on it and kept. <laughs> we just kept taking stuff away until it became minimal. You know, it's just like. It was just this constant, like, uh, it, was, it was the same way, I guess, we approached the songs in some level. Like, just, it wasn't about adding more and more layers. It was about stripping stuff away. Um, but, like, uh, so, th- but it was, like, the next day after I'd sent the artwork to Touch and Go that, um, you know, that the bomb was dropped and, and we broke up. <laughs> it was, like, so, like, wow. and I was, su- I was surprised Touch and Go even chose to release it, I think, because, you know, we're, lo- we, th- they were going to put out this ghost band that no longer existed. Yeah, they couldn't tour for it. They couldn't. Yeah, which <laughs> how funny that. I think yeah, it was he'd already invested in it, so he just he was like, I, I just have to put it out now. <laughs> like, I, um, but nobody expected it. We just thought it was going to get lost forever. And and um, fucking Nevermind came out right before oh, Spiderland. I think I totally forgot so, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Um, uh, so yeah, it was just, um, I, you know, we, we were all just resigned that like, we, we were already trying to forget Slint. I mean, what, what was that? So out. that was with Brian Paulson, right? That, what was that recording experience? Yeah. Like? We've never talked about it. And I think that I, I, if you have talked about it, I've never heard it. Uh, but, um, was it, a Oh yeah. I don't time? think we have, I haven't talked about it to too many people really. I don't, um, I mean, I, I always thought it was a good time just cause I loved going to Chicago and I loved being around, um, those guys yeah and it was but you know to me it's it seemed like a lot of stuff happened but when i look at the like the timeline like we tried we did the basic tracks from friday night to monday morning (laughs) and then and then i think the week um did we do another week i don't think we did another week i think the next weekend was mixing so it was just and that was it four days or something like that uh, well, it was just two weekends. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Which is crazy because yeah, we had the studio, so we but we barely slept. You know, like we, um, yeah, well, there wasn't much sleep, and there was one time, um, <laughs> gosh, yeah, like um, uh, uh, Albini was recording Jesus Lizard at CRC, I think, and and they all came over to visit, and we were. Uh, maybe listening back to something and he like, they just kind of raced in and like Steve checked all the mics and what mics we were using and right. how they were set up. And uh, like, he just, you know, he was just like overseeing everything. And then, um, and then he asked us to out to, you know, if we, if we were ready, if we wanted to go out to eat with them and we're like, um, you know, we're in the middle of something. And he's just like, it's like, all right, see you later, pussies. You know, and like, they all, they're like, and then, they, they, but they, they like breezed in and out for like 20 minutes. And that sort of happened every now and then. Like, yeah. we're just weird memories like that. Or um, like, I remember Brian breaking a string and we had such, so little time, you know, we had to, and we didn't have uh, another string or I had a string, but it, it had oh, to be no. the same gauge. Yeah, yeah. It's a different and, gauge, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. It, yeah. It had to be the same gauge and the same brand. And, um, 
and he didn't have one. And so it, and it was, you know, four in the morning. So we were like racing, like trying to get this one string so we could finish tracking. And it was, uh, it was jam packed. Did you, you have know, to like go weekends. to like a guitar, guitar center? So wait, I'm trying to think what 91. I think, yeah, they were I think then. Jennifer Hartman had a, ha- happened to have that exact gauge and, oh, man, that's and brand and, and she just showed up and she was so cool. Like, um, but, uh, yeah, there was. I feel like we had little adventures like that on the recording, but it was a short amount of time. It was a real short. Those sound, all sound like adventures. Like when people think about records, they like. I think they like apply these almost like sitcom style situations to it. Of like, oh yeah, that's when the Jesus Lizard drop by, and like you know whatever. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's not how recording is, except for when it does. Yeah, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, so okay, so at that point when you're when you're making that record though, uh I mean, you you live with the songs for a while. Like did you what did you feel recording-wise uh versus how it came in changed the most? Or or was it mostly sort of like, oh, that's pretty much how it, we thought it was going to be when it came in. Uh well, I mean, gosh, that's a good question. I mean, we we had practice so much um for like a year i mean do you even uh, think of them as songs at that point because when you <laughs> you know when you, when you, you know, play him to death like that right <laughs> well you know one of the like good morning captain was still evolving i remember because i think brian was still sorting out the lyrics uh, a bit and he would um and we and i think that was like that just happened to be the arrangement that that day you know um because we were um it was just like little tiny things, but the the arrangement for Good Morning Captain was still changing. Really, we ne- yeah, and none of us had ever heard Donny Man until we were st- recorded that weekend. Like, <laughs> like that was a song Brit had, and he just he uh, just busted the loose. Yeah, and he just yeah, he just had the words and everything, and I and he taught me how to play it. We did it like a duet sort of, um, and so yeah, so there was. I almost feel like there was, it wasn't improvisation, but there was a lot of off the cuff stuff that happened in the studio. Um, like there was some weird, uh, there's not many overdubs at all. Um, I think, uh, but they're like in washer just on the, when it's playing the main riff and there's no vocals, uh, there's, there's like a feedback tremolo guitar that just oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 comes yeah. in. You can, yeah, you can kind of hear that. Like just, but there, I don't think there's any, oh yeah. And there's a little bit of backing vocals in one song, like in breadcrumb trail. Uh, but I'll really like, but mixed really low. So, um, yeah, it's but, sort of like you almost have to be listening for it. Like it forces you to kind of like, huh? Yeah. What's that? what's that in the background? Yeah. It's just, or it's like something you just sort of feel like the, this part of the song just gets a little like thicker or something, you know? Um, and it's, uh, but you know, because we had so little time, like none of those overdubs, I think were, were thought out in advance. It was just like, why don't we try this since we have a, an hour to spend, you know? Like, <laughs> right. Well, which uh, is funny because yeah, it's not like you guys are sitting around, you know, this isn't like a, you know, a Rolling Stones album where you like rented a castle and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got yeah. all the time in the world. So it, it, it's, 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 it's sort of like, oh no! If you're going to be brilliant, you need to do it very quickly, and you need to be pretty sure about what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we had like a very low budget, and um, and we like any the seconds were dollars just going by. You know, like we're like we're running out of money fast. You know, and we're spending a lot yeah. of time finding this this gauge string. I was thinking <laughs> about. It's funny. I've used this analogy a lot. Uh, like like a like a sort of like a power meter like in like a fighting game or something. I think about that in terms yeah. of, but it's like budget and that's your budget just yeah, like, yeah, keeps exactly. going down the more time goes on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like like a death clock that, or something. Yeah, and that's that's actually what I was going to say about like um what we what you mentioned about the songs like uh, cuz we had played them so much but um like I didn't think they were the best versions of those songs. I I think we just got we just got a version that was um didn't have too many mistakes in it, you know? And then we moved on to the next one. Um, yeah. It wasn't like, uh, um, there weren't a lot of takes and there, um, and I, you know, some of them I thought were like, maybe because we were anxious, they were a little faster than they probably should have been. Um, and then, you know what I mean? Like they, 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 to me, they were like, we'd played them better at practice or we'd played them better at a show. Um, so like, uh, I feel like that, 
like Spiderland is just sort of, sort of like taking a photograph of what, what we what looked like was. at that time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you feel? Do you, do you feel like there's any mistakes or flubs that, like, you hear it every time and you're like, oh, there's that? Or is it something where you there, kind of mostly yeah. hear it as music now? Man, after um, I couldn't <laughs> actually listen to it for like a decade after it came out. Really? Um, oh yeah, I don't think I even listened to it. If you know, sometimes I would hear other people listening to it, and it was it would always bum me out. <laughs> like, yeah, because I'd be like, oh man, that's where Brit's supposed to hit the snare, or I was supposed to do this, you know, or like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like, um, and uh, but you know, like it, it took a long time for me to become proud of that record for sure. Like I, um, and I, and I think, yeah, I, I, I felt like I was in the shadow of it in a lot of ways. And that's why I was like, like when I did my solo stuff, I ne- never wanted to talk about slant or anything. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that's, so that's, that's a good point. We'll, and we'll get that just a second. Is, is, is something where the last thing I want to say on that on Spiderland though, is like, I mean, did you feel like when it hit and like kind of hit in people's consciousness and st- kind of stuck with it and stuck there, uh, w- were you, were you shocked? Were you like surprised or was it something where like, Oh, that's cool. And you didn't really, you know, think too much about it or like, was it something like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was, it was more like, um, that's really cool. But yeah, I didn't really, it didn't, I, I didn't, I couldn't conceive like it just, it was so alien. Cause I was, I was so used to being the band that, uh, or I mean, I, it was just like the handful of people that liked us. I felt like, and and we knew them all. Right, right, um, <laughs> totally, exactly. So, yeah, <laughs> they were our friends. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, we played in uh, shit. Where was it? Like in, I think it was um, Madison, Wisconsin, maybe. Um, and they like they they had billed us as Flint with an F and, <laughs> and like, and it's not like anybody knew us anyway. We didn't have any records out or I don't, um, maybe, maybe Tweez had been out, but it was, you know, that was a low pressing, like a, just yeah. our, our friend put it out and, uh, nobody knew who we were. And, and we played just to like the regulars at the bar with the, had their backs to us the whole time. And that was our show. Um, I, I think we may have, not gotten paid too. Um, <laughs> just something, to, it just was, to complete the yeah. look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was something weird. Um, but it, you know, it was, it really, so the idea that a lot of people would like it, it was, it was just really, it, it was really alien, a concept for a really long time. And yeah. I think, I think I just didn't, um, uh, I maybe tried not to think about it because <laughs> I couldn't wrap my head around it. Well, if you think about it, like for you guys, it, it was water. Right, it's, it's like you're in the you're in the water. You're going down the river towards the sea, and you don't think about the fact that you're in water because you're in water, and you're just moving along yeah. with everything else that's in the water. And it's also very difficult to get that parallax view of, of someone that listens to it. And it's that record's a very weird sounding record, but I mean that as a compliment. Yeah, like it gets your attention immediately. You're like, what? 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 Huh? Like at yeah. first, it's, at first confused, and then for a lot of you know a lot of folks, it's like, oh wow, this is really interesting. This is the, I don't know anything that sounds like this exactly. Yeah, but interesting it's, doesn't always sell, too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like um, something can be interesting and forgettable, you know, like interesting right. just for that moment. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, that's a like I think there is some magic on Spiderland that I none of us will ever understand, um, and it's there's like an atmosphere to it and there's like, um, it's very moody, you know, kind of a, in a good way. Yeah. It's like a world that you like that you get into, um, you kind of buckle in and then if you're in it, if you stick to the end, it's, you feel like you've experienced something. Um, and it, but it's like a world that you go into. Um, yeah. and I don't know how that happened. You know, <laughs> like, uh, I, I don't like, <laughs> No, no, but that's okay. You don't necessarily have to, you know. Like yeah. You you you, you yeah. help perform the spell. You don't have to be the magician that shows the trick, and it doesn't matter if you even know the trick. You perform the spell. Yeah. And I say that as a yeah. scientist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as a magician, yeah. Sometimes the magic just happens, and you don't know. It, yeah, just everything aligned um, uh, for then. And and you know what? I do think the best things are when you least expect it. Like the the best things happen, and. We'd had low expectations for sure. Um, but when you have low or no expectations, there's nowhere to go but up. Right? Exactly. Yeah. 
So then, all right, so you, t- you turn in the record, band immediately breaks up, <laughs> and uh, then you start working on some stuff on your own. Uh, that first one, you were just calling it M, right? Or M is the That's 13th right. letter, something along those lines? Is it, mm-hmm. I, do yeah. I, or is it Ariel M that was first? No, it was M is the 13th letter, right? Yeah, that's the first one. Okay. Yeah. Feel free to correct me if I get one of these things wrong, by the way. so uh, It doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that drill. That that's my self-loathing coming out. <laughs> well, uh, so from all right, so from, an, so from an outside perspective, obviously years before I knew you or anything, I was just like, oh, why is this guy always changing the band name? That's really annoying. Like I don't understand. I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. Why is he doing that? Uh, yeah. But what was the reason for uh, changing in your mind? It was because it was a different. I mean, for Ariel M and Papa M, it's sort of like okay, there's a defined sound. There's a, there's sort of like a change that's happened. Right. What about from the M is the thirteenth letter to Ariel M? Like, what was in your mind there? Um, I think I think I just wasn't uh, I, I wasn't happy with um, like it. Just, it was good for that one single like uh, that I did that was M is the thirteenth letter, and then I think I did a split single with with Letitia um, from Stereo Lab. Oh yeah. Um, and I and I just called it M, and then. Um, uh, what did I, then I think it was Ariel M after that. And I think I just wanted the M, uh, the, the letter M to take flight, you know? Um, so that it was like, a Ariel. I, I just called it Ariel M and then it stuck because it's, it, it, the idea behind that concept was like, um, like, can you orchestrate or like with just, you know, two guitars, bass and drums and no vocals and no weird tunings, um, and no effects, um, like what can you do with that like it was just like an experiment right. like like how and I, so i wanted to see like how expressive can you be with it and like just and have fun with it at the same time or create some kind of mood um and uh, so that was yeah that was the idea behind ariel m was was it an and homage then, to the uh, fritz lang movie or was that just coincidental i uh, i loved the movie for sure yeah, yeah. Man, peter laurie it's good yeah I, th- I saw that maybe as a kid because, well, this is boring style. I don't know if I should say. <laughs> hey, you've heard this one. Tell it. <laughs> yeah. Well, my. Uh, <laughs> um, well, you always have more uh, more interesting guests. <laughs> but, um, ah, go on. Stop it. Stop my it. my sis- my mom was a, a um, she would she was like sometimes she was a substitute teacher for French. Um, and she would take me to French films that didn't have subtitles at mm-hmm. the, that the college had. And they were always like black and white films. And she took me to see like a French version of M when I was a kid, which uh, freaked me out, but in a good way. Right. Um, and I and I remember seeing it and feeling like <laughs> I remember telling her after the movie because I would go with her just because I liked movies. And yeah, yeah, even though I didn't understand a word of it, you know, and it was <laughs> like these old fashioned movies. And I was like. Well, 10 or 11 and uh but it looks and I was cool like, and you're you're there like having an experience and yeah yeah we didn't have Fortnite yet so it's like <laughs> <laughs> you know as a kid you have to do something and that like uh and i remember like after the movies like being like yeah i totally understood that movie i think i can speak french now mom <laughs> <laughs> She's like, really? And she was playing along with it, I guess. But I was firmly believed that I understood everything that happened in the movie. <laughs> Got a uh, crash course in it by Curtis here, Fritz Lang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and also, I don't know if, um, if uh, like, how much of uh, Renee's interview with me that you got to hear, but, like, uh, I found out after I, like, because to me, M was a symbol. Like, it wasn't... Um, it was a shape, you know, it wasn't like a, I didn't think of it so much as a letter, but like a almost, yeah, you know, like I was, I loved when Prince changed his name to just the symbol. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, the unpronounceable like symbol. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. You can't, I thought that was amazing. Like, especially to be like a mainstream artist and to pull a move like that. Like, um, I, I just couldn't believe that he did that. And I, I liked the idea of having an anti band name that was like, um, was just a shape. And to me, the letter M was a shape, but it was also on a typewriter. So, you, <laughs> um, uh, and, but, so I wanted to call it just M, but it turns out there was a band called M in the eighties that did that song pop music. I don't know if you oh, remember yeah, that yeah. song. Oh, yeah, yeah, pop music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. talking about 
pop, pop music. music. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that that band was called M. Uh, so I was like, man, I don't want to be associated with them. So I had to change it. <laughs> well, so it, it is. A, first of all, it is a cool shape. I mean, if you think about like the terms of like we don't think about English letters as like art objects necessarily. Yeah. Part, but it's you know it's it's palindromic. Like it's got like you know it, it's almost a like a, a pictograph. Totally. Almost. And we. Ways. I mean, we look at runes like they're like shapes and pieces of art, or high look, you know, yeah. um, you know, or Sanskrit even looks looks cool. Like I think that. Um, you know, you know, eventually the Roman alphabet's just going to be like that. You know, it's just people are going to see it and it's just going to look like shapes. Um, and I just like the shape of the letter M. There's always those. Maybe it's. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I was going to make a bad joke. Oh, I was I, I was actually <laughs> I was actually going to make a bad joke, too. <laughs> oh, go for it. Yours is better than mine, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I was just talking going to talk about the fact, that, you know, people get like Japanese letters tattooed on them because they look yeah cool. yeah totally but like you know it being like you know oh what does it say oh it says that it says this guy's an asshole you know yeah yeah <laughs> or yeah in the future people will be like i love the this shape of that you know from that ancient alphabet like uh and it's the, be like yeah that's actually the mcdonald's m you know like like they, they don't realize it but let, yeah. just let them go yeah yeah <laughs> uh well there's also you know, and that can that can that can cut both ways for sure. Like there's that um, picture. I think it's I want to say it's like uh, some Japanese kids that are at a protest or something along those lines, and yeah. one of them has like an NWA shirt, but it says something like really funny, like. Uh, All like, right, I've seen that one. It's not. It's not instead of fuck the police. It's like don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh god was it what is it uh, i i can't remember it's like a polite way of saying like like um ignore the police or something you know <laughs> yeah it's something um, where they, they didn't have that yeah. specific translation so whoever it was kind of like did the best they had with what they and they actually made something like totally awesome because of that yeah uh, yeah what, what is it i think i have it somewhere let me try to find it this is this is the best radio is when i go looking around for a meme that nobody can see on a radio show <laughs> Christ. Oh, here we go. Strongly dislike the police. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, and I think a lot of that is, yeah, it's the same thing as like, they just want to see like English words on a shirt, you know? Yeah. And they, NWA logo is identifiable. <laughs> like, the, um, it almost doesn't matter what it says. Yeah, and it's and it does look cool, even though, and it's almost, you know, if you're, if you're in the position of like, you know, Dada esque and absurdism. It's almost like cooler that it doesn't say "fuck the police." That it says like you know, <laughs> strongly dislike the police. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so, it's so just, yeah. It's kind of bizarre and cool and interesting. But anyway, all right. So we're you know what we're it's only, so polite. It is very it's so polite. But we're only yeah. in the mid nineties here, so we get we got a lot of ground to cover. So talk to talk to me about um, from M or M is the thirteenth letter into Ariel yeah. M. What what was what was the defining thing for Ariel M? Uh, I mean, it was just that about the um, that that was the concept was just uh, like st- like clean guitars and like sort of just orchestrating, uh, you know, what is that? Um, like 16 strings, you know, and, uh, and like what? Yeah, it was just like, what can you do with with these tones without? But it's the same kind of it's the same tools that everybody has um, and make it your own. But then I guess with the, like when I went to Papa M, it was more like there weren't any more rules. It was like that's when I started getting into like adding electronics, and, um, vocals, and yeah, like it just kind of like anything goes um, there. And so I felt like it was time to it was it wasn't like Ariel M sounding material to me. It just um, sounded different in your mind. It's also yeah. when you talk about you know, uh, trying to do like the challenge of just doing it with, you know, no w- weird tuning and no effects. What I always think of that, um, the five obstructions. Are you familiar with that? There's a large <clears throat> one here, uh, I believe. Anyway, the, he, it's sort of like conceived as a documentary, but there's this like, it, it's, it's an experimental film. Right. And right. basically large one Trier's favorite film is this movie, the perfect human, and Lars von Trier gave the director, his, his buddy, uh, the task of remaking it. Like, it's a short film. But each time with, like, 
an obstruction or an obstacle that Von Trier said. Like, you know, and what, like, in one case, the first one is like, uh, he has to do it. He, you know, he, uh, he has to do it in Cuba uh-huh. <laughs> with no set and, uh, has to answer these questions that are in the film. Anyway, there's these different things that he has to do to. Oh like, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. And, uh, so it almost, so I mean, I, I, there's a point to this. So it's almost like, no, it is like that. It's exactly like that. I mean, I, that's kind of what I have to do to get excited about a record is like, if, there, if I have unlimited options, I just, I'll just won't do anything, <laughs> you know, like, right. so I, I, I feel like I have to, I have to set parameters and like, you know, like, I guess the last record, like, like proper record I did was music for four acoustic guitars. And it was the same thing, like almost like an aerial one thing where it's just like, you have four acoustics like like let's what songs do you yeah what can write I do with, with this yeah. yeah um so uh i i like setting up like yeah like parameters i guess where um because then that gets me excited and I'm, I'm not distracted like i i i have a, like a narrow focus that i have to stay within for um because that's that's plenty of problems to solve for me. <laughs> right. Like, exactly. you know? Well, and, and that also can be a creative spark, right? Like if you don't have as many, totally, if you don't have the crayon box that has how many are in the the really big one? Ninety six, one hundred and ten. I don't even know. But you know, yeah, the, I don't remember really now. One. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you just have like yeah. the the small box, the eight box of crayons, and it's like, okay, here are your crayons. Go, like you know, make a picture. You know, I think I got that. I these, I mean, this sort of, um, like I thinking about it now, like, uh, I think that's just something that I've learned from just friends, like grown up with the, the friends that I grew up with, like just creating, um, like, uh, when I was in, I played with Royal trucks for like, uh, I guess that was almost a year too in 98. Um, See, I forgot and, about uh, that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I played bass with Royal trucks for a while, but I remember like there were, he, uh, Neil told me about a drummer that, uh, he didn't like the way he played. He was like a sort of a flashy drummer. So he would do stuff like take away his snare drum and floor Tom and be like, <laughs> okay, this is, this is yeah, your kid. This, this you is know? what you have to work with. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then he started playing cool stuff or something more interesting, you know, like, yeah. um, and so I think that's a good, like I, and I remember I played a show with, or no, it wasn't a show. It was just like I played one song. It wasn't even a song <laughs> with um, with uh, David Grubbs and John McIntyre. Uh, it was yeah. It was just and we didn't. It was it was just a concept. Like he like Grubbs was like, okay, let's go on stage. We each have our own symbol and drumsticks, and we play the symbol for twenty minutes. You know, <laughs> so uh, and because because like people aren't used to really hearing that. Uh, just just symbols like going for 20 minutes, yeah, you know, as like, like the a thing, as, not like, as, yeah. like a, uh, as a side dish, but as a main course. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, like, so I guess that whole, like having parameters, um, like it sets up a problem that you have to solve, you know, like how can I make this interesting while you're doing it? You know, um, like maybe we should try to, uh, like if I put some dynamics in, somebody else can step up or vice versa. You know what I mean? Like you, you kind of like, um, oh, I do know, what but you, you kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like, you know, I'm going to tune all the strings to one note. Um, yeah. And, and like, <laughs> what's that going to sound like? Um, and it's like, Oh, you know, it's awesome. Like, oh, terrible. Okay. You know, you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. Both at the same time. Or, or if it's like terrible, like, how am I going to make this work? Yeah. Because that's what I, that's the only, this is the only tool I have for this overdub. Right. You this know? is like, what you've chosen to do. To, okay. Let's find a way to make this neat. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't think it's like anything on my part. I feel like it's that was sort of the culture that I grew up in was like this that's how you that's how you make have kind of have fun and like fuck with things and yeah. and um uh yeah, and, and just have new a new experience whether it sucks or not, you know, it almost isn't the point. Um <laughs> it's like you know, it's like yeah. it, it might suck for the listener, <laughs> but like <laughs> Uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't, and that's a, that's uh, you know the nature of the beast, I guess. There's a the physicist Richard Feynman, like one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite people, and like um, he used to give these like physics talks, and it was always really good because he was able to like break down 
you know, this complicated science to the layman in a way that's very funny and very entertaining. But one of his oh man, he sounds great. He's totally awesome. And and one of his uh, one of his books is uh, called uh, The Pleasure of Finding Things Out. And I always thought that was a really good book title, and especially for a dude like that. Yeah, it's like applying that same principle for music. The pleasure of finding things out. Yeah. Is it like a sex book? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> does have a really Some... funny thing about masturbation. And like uh, when he's talking about when he's working on the Manhattan Project, uh, mm-hmm. he does this whole like complicated thing of like tables and graphs that shows like how much he was able to like focus versus how long it had been since, you know. <laughs> since, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> and he's like super uh, scientific about it. And it's really, it's really funny. Like it's really entertaining. That's on a. Uh, Surely you're joking. Mr. Feynman is the name of that one. Oh, wow. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> Man. Anyway, physics books. Uh, so, so Papa M is kind of the, the moniker that you've, you've stuck with the most. I think that the first Papa M release is like 99, right? Something like that. It's about like 20 years, something like that. Um, uh, oh yeah. I think you're right for Papa M. Yeah. 99. Um, I mean like also like, in the nineties I was doing other, st- like, like the solo stuff was just what I did in between other things. Right. Um, so what, what were your other, yeah. What were your other, well, like what right did you after learn... Slump broke. Oh, sorry. Go yeah. ahead. Oh yeah. I was going to, was... oh, totally. We've skipped over a whole area. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's just, I feel like this stuff is, um, they all kind of go along alongside each other, but like there's the solo stuff, but, um, there's also the collect mark, the collaborations or like right yeah, after the Slump four carnation uh, yeah album, four carnation which they, there was a really um, cool article that, that dude wrote and uh quietus i think something like along those lines like recently Julie right uh, about that record or about yeah. four carnation it was about uh, the four carnation in general but i think there was there was a large focus on that record as well uh, yeah that was like a like it was a good time for music i feel like um like because Slint broke up, but we were all friends, so we we all played on the first King Kong single and the first um, Palace Brothers or yeah, Palace Brothers. Oh singles. yeah, was it was it? Uh, um, <laughs> that's another one. Palace Palace Brothers. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And then Bonnie Prince Billy. Um, yeah, so that was a um, well because there's like what joy there's that that run of records like there's like Joya and I see a darkness. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, Will's a powerful songwriter and musician in his own right. Like, what was what for was, sure? What was the experience of working on those records with him and working that stuff out? I mean, it was um, you know, like all of us were like. I feel like you know, he, they were so young when I met him. I was the oldest, and I was probably like sixteen or something. You know, um, so I, I would uh, like we just known each other for so long. I guess at that point, it didn't seem. Like we would just help out Ethan and it would be a King Kong record. But like uh, sometimes we play different instruments, um, like on the first Palace Brothers single um, for Ohio Riverboat song. I think Britt, the drummer from Slint, is playing guitar. I'm Brian's playing bass. Or no, Brian's playing drums and I'm playing bass, I think. Um, so it's like it's like the Slint guys. But and Todd. Rashir was engineering this single, so it's it like was. The slint it was guys like when everyone's on a different instrument doing a different thing. Yeah, so it doesn't sound anything like Slint, um, it, uh, and it's and it's Will songs, and um, so like I guess like working with Will, it just it just yeah, all of it just felt natural. Like it was just like jamming with your friends, or um, it was that kind of vibe. It wasn't. Uh, yeah, it was just really natural. Um, well, and those couple records are, that's another example of just records that really, you know, found their audience and connected with people and have massive, deep meaning for folks, uh, you know, even years later and that new folks discover every year. Yeah. I mean, did you have the idea when you were working on those ones? They're like, oh, we're making something special here. This is cool. Or was it just like, oh, whatever, we're jamming? Um, it was, I mean, I, I felt like everything was special, you know, like well, to yeah, me, yeah. I just I mean, didn't, I didn't feel like it was special to yeah. No, I know what you mean though. Like I didn't, I definitely had no bigger picture. Like I, it was for us and that was it. Like, um, if I, I, in fact, I expected everything to be forgotten and it didn't matter, you know? Um, 
or I, yeah, we, I, we weren't like the music wasn't being made for those reasons anyway, to be remembered or heard again, you know, in my opinion, like it was just, uh, I thought it was cool. And my friends thought it was cool. And that was, that was good enough. Like that was a success right there. Um, well, totally. Cause I mean, Oh, that's what it should be about, right? <laughs> it should, it should yeah. be about con- making that deep connection and finding something cool and not necessarily yeah, worrying I, about how it's even perceived. Yeah, and I I think if it's if the music is is good, like it'll find its audience. You don't have to go d- digging for it or tr- t- in my opinion at least, like you, um place ads on TikTok. It, <laughs> yeah. I I, I barely mean, I know think, what TikTok is by the way, so that's a the really Me too. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's, I'm just. I, I'm just I feel sweeping. really modern. For, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm like clawing at the air for a reference. I'm like ah, TikTok. Sure, that sounds good. I don't even know if they have that. It's like they do. It's like Neil Hamburger talking about the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Like <laughs> you, you kind of you kind of he doesn't really grasp what they are. It's just a bunch of. It's like a name that he's heard. That he yeah. thinks he's being modern by saying it. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a. Um, but like, well, like, uh, like, yeah, basically, my dad, yeah, like your grandpa trying to be cool or something. Like, That's um, how I feel when people talk about TikTok. I'm like, well, I don't know anything about that. Oh, me too, man. Yeah, I'm in a bubble for sure. But like, um, yeah, I think the like the music, like I, I think I'm especially on this trip because uh, I since you know, like I'm um, was raised in Kentucky and stuff. And like, I've been living for the past five years in California. Um, and LA especially has like, there's a lot of ambitious people oh. <laughs> in LA. And I, I guess I didn't, I just, you know, I just figure people are people. And I didn't realize that like how everybody wants to make it big. Like everybody wants yeah. to be the next big thing. And like you're the Uber driver. Hand, like, here's that you're a musician, like hands you his card. Like, you know, like, um, you know, like, check out my uh, you know, yeah. And, yeah. And I'm working on a screenplay too. Like yeah, yeah. you should check it out. Yeah. Like yeah. everybody, um, it's just really bizarre to me. Like, um, and I, and I feel like there's like, especially in music, like there's been this, um, like things have to be done a certain way. Like you have to get likes and followers and you have to build a name and you have to get a manager right. and you have to get a booking agent. And you have Who to handles play. your social you media? To... Who does, you know, yeah, <laughs> me, I do. And all, <laughs> and all that stuff is fine. You know, I, I think it's fine. I don't, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I think the priorities are wrong. you know what I mean? Like that, all that totally. stuff should be secondary to the music, like the music, like stay in the practice room, you know, like get the music first. Um, and and then all that other stuff will be a lot easier, you know. Yeah, like, like your social media think, game's on point, but try making some art that's you know going to add something to the world. Yeah, yeah. Just make the songs the best you can instead of like uh, I don't know, like uh, so, like some bands. Like I since I've been in LA, like I've heard about bands forming, and then they they already have like their social media and likes and followers. They already have that sorted out, and they have not played a show yet you know like yeah. um it's which is to me is really backwards uh like i, I feel like the priorities in the right in the wrong place right now and like people think there's a formula for doing things and, and there's the only formula is just like a g- good music <laughs> you know that's the only yeah, formula. it should be yeah for sure yeah so yeah. okay so and, and i think there's also something very special with louisville too the all the musicians i know from there uh, including the one I play with and kind of trying the secret friends are just sort of quiet badasses that like they, they aren't, they aren't necessarily even big talkers, but they always yeah. deliver. And I, I think that's so interesting because it is almost the opposite. <laughs> of LA. Is that yeah. 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 Totally. <laughs> and I like LA yeah, too. Let's be clear. I'm just saying that, that I love you're, LA. everything yeah. you're talking about, it's like, Oh, there is like, yeah, everybody's, got an angle everyone everybody's got like yeah. a hustle that they're trying to do and they're all like really it's worried just about culture most of the shock stuff that for me matter. yeah of course yeah yeah it's not like hey i hate this it's just like i'm learning it you know um but yeah that i didn't realize that was a louisville quality um, i mean it's i mean the, it was after yeah. about the first dozen musicians i met from there it was like, okay, i guess <laughs> this is i don't know like it's no but i think you're right that's a cool like that's an objective uh, perspective that, or like your vantage point is probably more truth. Like, cause I feel like I'm stuck in it and it is true. Like a lot, a lot of 
the Louisvillians I know are, are, are a few words. But yeah, when it's time to deliver, they always do. Like, it's just, yeah, that's what you do. Um, and then, of course, there's I also guess, folks like Brett, Eugene, Ralph that are total badasses in their own right, but never at a loss for words. But uh, <laughs> yeah, also really articulate. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Very yeah. good with the words, actually, as it turns out. I didn't even know yeah. that he, uh, I didn't even know anything about malignant growth. I don't know how I would have being come from yeah California. yeah i don't know how you would either but yeah like when he told me like all those stories of like you know them with him doing warm-up with minor threat and stuff like that i'm like oh wow that's crazy this is a whole yeah. side of you i didn't know about this is so cool oh man yeah see that's the brett that i knew first and like sure. the, the new brett yeah yeah brett is pretty much he's pretty much a living legend for sure like we the well, last time i was in louisville i spent a lot of time with brett and um I was like, okay, I've never asked you about this, but this is like one of the rumors when I first met him, um, like I was intimidated by him. Uh, He's intimidating because he, <laughs> Yeah, like I, he looked like a biker, especially back then too, yeah, like oh, just totally. really hardcore. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was like, uh, I was like, um, I, but I'd heard about you before I'd met you. So I was already intimidated because he'd played with Malignant Growth in Cincinnati or, or in, um, yeah, it was in Cincinnati, I think. Uh, and it, there was like a sort of a rivalry between scenes a little bit. And he, like while Malignant Growth were playing, he went into the slam pit, like a, took a metal folding chair and stood on it and did the, and dared anybody to knock him off the chair <laughs> while and like in the middle of the pit. And he did the whole set singing there and nobody knocked him off. Like it was like, <laughs> and I asked him about that. I was like, is that true? Or is that just like, uh, like an herb, you know, like a Louisville myth. And he was like, and he told me the whole story and it was totally no, true. No, it's like, true, man. I tell you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just, that was a good imitation. Yeah, oh, dude. He's a, uh, yeah. Um, that dude's a walking talk in history. Uh, yeah. In a good way. And and totally. still and still doing cool shit now, which is also important to mention. Totally, yeah. But yeah, that is the Louisville thing, I think. Like, um uh to yeah, you just you don't really talk about what you do, you just do it. Um um mostly because maybe not all of us are have the gift of of words or like we aren't <laughs> masters of words like will will but will Oldham i think is a master of words but he's he's also not a huge talker um yeah i mean the two aren't mutually exclusive like it's it's like you can be you can be really <laughs> i was about to say you can be really good with words which is maybe the least articulate <laughs> way i could put that but you you can be really good with words but then also not a big speaker <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but, Take two weeks yeah. off, man. And <laughs> oh man, yeah, I got got blow off the cobwebs now. <laughs> uh, and- I can't believe that. Like, you, that's so many podcasts that you've done recently, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like it's like I was saying to you about the uh, the slint stuff. Let's water, man. Like, I didn't even I didn't even think about yeah. it until earlier today. I'm like, oh my god, this is like the biggest break that I've done since like the pandemic started. And like, I think a, I think I've actually did more episodes in like a six week period than I did in like a year and a half period at one point. Cause there was like one year where I just didn't do the show that much. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because of touring and, and just uh, yeah. that kind of thing. Well, and also I, I've gotten to the point, I don't really do this so much anymore, but this medium is very passive, right? You, you, you do a right. thing it goes out into the world and then you never hear from it again. Usually that's yeah. usually how it works, which doesn't mean that it isn't part of people's regular life and something that is, is part of their routine. It just means you usually don't have that exchange or interaction. Not the same way as if you like play a show or something. Right. Right. So because, because I mean, I have the way that my mind is wired. I've definitely basically completely convinced myself. I'm like, Oh, nobody list is listening to this. This doesn't matter. This is stupid. I'm going to stop doing this multiple times right. while not announcing anything or saying anything yeah, yeah. or even really like a hundred percent making the decision. But what's crazy about that is I've always run into someone at like at a show or just gotten a nice email of someone like, Hey, I just wanted to say, you know, I really like the show. Like it's, it's really cool. And they would name something really specific and I'll be like, Oh my God. Yeah. Like almost like in the way that the best yeah. it is. Cause it's like when you see that in a movie or TV show, you're like, no, 
that wouldn't happen. Yeah. But then it's like, no, that's yeah, actually yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not reality. <laughs> yeah, because it's usually like life isn't that cool. But it does it does happen. Yeah. And it's happened like four or five times. More than that, but four or five times where I was basically on the precipice of like stopping doing it. And yeah. it was It means so much. And I don't know like I hope people do that. Like it like I'm I'm the same way. Like I don't want to give somebody a compliment because I'm such a huge fan or something. I'm embarrassed to be like, uh, you know, you like, say something I stupid really love or, what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or yeah, you they're if they're your hero or something. Yeah, or yeah. like um but like one little thing, like one little compliment can go a long way. Like it can be like, yeah, like the difference between you doing more like stuff like that or not, you know? Yeah. And it's, um, it's not like, and I don't want to be clear. It's not like I'm sitting here like waiting for people to give me feedback to decide whether to do this or not, you know, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's something that for me knowing that like, okay, I can't, I can't tour. I can't record, you know, I don't have a day job. Like I'm just sitting here in this bizarre anxiety inducing situation what can I do? I'm like, well, what I can do is have these conversations with folks, which I enjoy doing. I don't, I, I never have people on that. I don't enjoy Like I, I, yeah. I've turned down plenty of people that would be considered like bigger guests. Not that this is supposed to be a brag about me or anything, but like, I'm Ted just, Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, but it's like, yeah. I'm the wrong guy. Don't talk to someone else. Yeah. Cause the whole the, right, right. The reason why this show is, good i feel is because there is this uh i have an interest in in the subject and because of that you know whether i have like you know an encyclopedic familiarity or just a a great affinity there's something there that i think comes out that's different than what other people get i don't know this is getting really navel gazy sorry but uh no it's i like it so oh yeah so getting back around to what you asked me i think it's it's interesting to me that and again, we are still in a pandemic, just just as a level set and for anyone to listen to this, like, you know, whatever, 10 years later. Or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th- just the fact that it's been something that's been like helpful for people to like get through like a weird time to kind oh, of yeah. take their minds off stuff and also realize that like everybody I talk to is like, hey, you know, what are you doing in your pandemic? And they're like. And of course, so many of the answers are like, well, I don't go out at all. So, you know, my life really hasn't changed that much, <laughs> which yeah. is funny. But it's also like it's it's nice to get that feeling of, of, of connection with people. And, and all the more so when it's someone that's like, oh, I enjoy this person's music and art. And it has meant a lot to me in these important times that it's, you know, I don't want to get on my high horse about it. But it like that means yeah. something, I, you know, like it's, it really does. Yeah, I I never um, I, I never want to be like numb to it or just be like, like, cause sometimes people are like, I'm sure you heard this a million times, but I love Spiderland or something. And I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm always like, that's fucking awesome. Like I, them, like, I don't think people realize how that really does. That mean, could pick, you know? If you're having a, a, like a crappy day or something like that. And somebody's oh, like, oh, totally. like, Oh, that's awesome. How cool. That, if you think you're the worst piece of shit in the world, you know, and then yeah. somebody's <laughs> like, you did something like, amazing once when you were 19 never nothing since then but you know <laughs> no i'm just kidding <laughs> but it's like uh, which, but, which you know because i when you're wired yeah, a certain way though that is something that like you you know whether you're kidding or not that is something like a part of you will will say that's like the asshole part of you will say something like that even though you totally, intellectually yeah. know it's not true at all <laughs> uh, <laughs> what we'll see well time will tell <laughs> yeah. Dude, come um, on stop i'm just kidding but the like the um uh what was i gonna, oh yeah i have had that or like i guess like internal struggle where i'm like i only write music really that to please that pleases or interests me you know like I, it's always been that way you know and i kind of don't care if i'm if other people like it in in a real selfish way you know like um, i hope they do but i don't it's not going to i'm not going to write it hoping that someone else likes it other yeah. than my best friends or like, or, my, or, you know, musicians whose opinions I respect. Or totally. Something, it, it's, it's something where it's, um, it's a bonus. Like it's, it's a mitzvah yeah. as they say, when people, when people do, <laughs> when people do connect yeah. with it. Uh, and but, that's, yeah. you know, that's, that's something that, you know, and that can, that can cut both ways too. Like when you're in a situation where you're doing something that's maybe not popular, not in the zeitgeist or something, when you have, someone that's like you respect that's like hey this is really good and you hear that's like, oh, oh yeah cool that's 
I thought that's so, really but validating. It's, it's, it's nice yeah. to hear you say that because sometimes you get a little too close to it and you don't, you can't tell. Yeah, sure anymore. you can't tell if it's good or bad, but I like it. You know that yeah, kind of I'm thing. Pretty sure um, it's pretty good. I don't. <laughs> but the that's thing cool. is, like I, like if I, you know, I've had that internal struggle where you, it's like okay, if I'm just writing music for me and like the people I, you know, the like six people that <laughs> whose opinions I really care about or something like. Why am I? Why do I release records? Why do I go um, on stage and deal with my stage fright and play these songs in front of strangers? You know, like why don't I just stop there? And then, and it only is because I've, you know, it's only been. It seems like I've. I've it's worked out so that I'm not. I found out that I'm not the only person that, that, feels that also way. likes it. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, so and so I kind of do it like even. I, that's the only reason I release records and play shows is because, like, I, it's you know I feel like there's going to be one or two people at least that that kind of like feels is on the same page as me with with these songs or something you know, um, and maybe more so like it, uh, so when people say something nice like that like, um, it's the whole reason that I do. Yeah. Like that I don't just keep it to myself, you know? Well, totally. I hope I mean, that makes sense. No, no, absolutely. And it's something yeah. where, you know, it can be tough when, when you're in the position of being a fan too. It can be tough because you don't know if you're just bothering someone or if they're like, Oh, oh yeah. they don't want to hear from me. Like whatever. They're busy. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I mean, be try to be tactful. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, well, yeah, and there is, and there is that punisher I'm taking element a dump. of just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need you like sticking your head under the stall. <laughs> like, oh, who was no. it that was like was hassling? Um, oh, God, was it Rollins or Ian McKay? I can't, I can't remember. But somebody was like, ha- yeah, hassling them like when they were on the toilet. Uh, ah, God. I, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, this is a terrible oh, story. That's brutal. I'm sorry, but yeah, that's. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this is two dudes talking. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, okay, but no, no, no. Uh, level set for all this stuff. So it, it is something where, you know, it's it's nice, it, even if it's not why you're doing it, it, it's nice to have some connection, some meaning, and, and give some help to people. Because uh, life is yeah. cruel and nasty and brutish and short and anxiety-inducing. So anything you can do, if you can do anything, just to kind of make life even infinitesimally marginally better is a, is a wonderful yeah. thing it does take and i know like because i'm a fan of bands too you know like i know that uh it's it's kind of hard to to say to walk up to a stranger and tell them you know how into their art they are or something like because i i remember going to see the fall play in cincinnati and um uh you know i'd seen them a couple times already and i and I had gone to eat before the show at this place and Marky Smith was sitting next to me at the, and, um, and he, but he was with a, a woman. I was like, Oh my God, like Marky's like my hero is right there. Right. And, um, and I was like, I was like, I really want to talk to him, but like, what the hell? Like he's all, he's really, you know, he's a hateful guy. Yeah, He's know? like he, known like, for being like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, he's beating up his band yeah. on stage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, Firing members on stage, like just not not known for like being an overwhelming uh, wellspring yeah, of human like, kindness. Totally. Like I, uh, you know, I've heard a billion stories about him, and I was like, oh my god, but I, I'm going to interrupt him having dinner with this woman, and like, I was like, I can't say anything. I have to say something. I can't do it. I have to do it. You know, like yeah. it was this thing, and, and then finally, as I was leaving, I was like, I walked past, and I was like. I'm really excited for your show tonight. And I just stood there for a second and ran away, you know, like, so I understand what it feels like to be a fan and to, you know, like I have the, um, and it, and it's not easy. So it, I understand, it means a lot to me when, when, you know, even if somebody's like, I know you've probably heard this a billion times. You yeah. Know? Yeah. When people, I, like, maybe, like I, maybe I have. That. Yeah, exactly. But it's okay yeah. because you're, guess what? It's the billionth and first and it still means a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It really does. And, and I know it's, it meant, um, you love it for a reason that's different from the other person that said it, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like everyone has their, it's unique to everyone's experience. So I know that's like a, a big deal. <laughs> um, I don't know how I started talking about that. No, no, it's fine. This, this is, this is, this is the show. It's, it's, uh, people don't like it. They can 
fuck off. They can yeah, <laughs> they can delete they can it or skip it or whatever. You know, no one's forcing you to listen to the show. It's fine. Uh, yeah. I think it's fascinating, and that's all that counts. Just <laughs> um, yeah. But what's also fascinating is uh, another thing I forgot that you played in Tortoise. I totally forgot about that. Also, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. That was um, yeah. I'd moved to Chicago to play in Tortoise, and that was I don't remember what the years are. I'm really bad with that. I think it was ninety five to ninety eight. Yeah, it was um, like uh, it, it was it was later '90s for sure because I already was. I yeah, remember I got that record, uh, the blue one. It's like my favorite color, blue. Uh, uh, Millions now living. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I liked that one too. It was. It was um, I was impressed. Was it started first... with a song that was like 20 minutes long. I remember that. I was like, oh, yeah. bold move. <laughs> yeah, man, that and that song was pretty crazy for the time. You know, yeah. like it was. Yeah, it starts with a 20 minute song and it has that weird glitchy part in the yeah. middle where it sounds like your CD or You're like, is your this, record is this just meant to sound broke. Like, this? like what? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? <laughs> Do you know the story about that part? No, um, I would love you to tell it to me and the audience um well the way maybe i have it wrong but the way i remember it is that um you know john was doing mixes of the song and like there, there was one transition he just couldn't get and he would like every night he would or every morning because we all lived together too like he would play us what he did the night before and it, uh, and it was all great you know but he he still wasn't happy and then i think there was one night out of frustration he just he had all these like pieces of you know this it was all recorded to tape and mixed on tape yeah, yeah. it was that it was that old-fashioned like but um it was like uh he had all the, he just dumped out the garbage can that had all these little snippets of tape in it and just pieced them all together um and that's what that's what happened like that's what it sounded like and we were like we couldn't believe how cool it sounded like <laughs> um it was completely random um yeah well i'm, and, trying, I'm trying to think of the only thing I mean, I guess there's that one Melvin's record where it's just the, uh, <laughs> where it sounds like the CD skipping and then like the bass line comes in and it's like, oh, okay, they're doing a the thing. But, right. and, and like Trans Am yeah. did something, to, I don't remember, I think it was like later than that, I can't remember, but it was, it's pretty unique sounding. I mean, it was, it, in rock yeah. music, it's pretty unique sounding. Let's put it that way. I'd never heard anything like that in 95. You know, yeah. like, or, I don't, I, I hadn't. Um, and it was just, and I don't think he was trying, you know, he wasn't trying to make it sound like anything. It was just, he, he, he just like literally just spliced random pieces of tape together. And that's what, that's what it sounded like. Um, um, but like, uh, yeah. So tortoise, I think was 95 to 98. And I did, and I toured with stereo lab during that time. Um, that's right. Which I, I that was a thing that uh, you posted something about that. And I was like, Oh yeah, I forgot about it. But I also came to Stereo yeah. Lab pretty late to the game. Like for whatever reason, I just missed them until like, you know, way later. And I was like, Oh, this is awesome. right. How did I miss this? But whatever. Oh man. I, I do that with bands all the time. Like I, um, especially if there's like a hype around a band, like I, I'm like, I'm sure they're great. I'll check them out in 10 years, you know, like, um, <laughs> like just, just because I want to judge it just for the music and not, and not be like, um, you know, not not based on trends or anything, or like what's cool with it. But at the, as a result, I end up just missing bands and then missing a lot of great shows and stuff. Like I was like, shit, I should have checked them out back when I could have. You know? Yeah, well, totally. You know? Well, dude, I mean. <laughs> I love that band Granddaddy. They're from the same town that I am, and we're doing all their best work when oh, wow. I was living there. But I was like too like, oh, I'm too punk rock to listen to that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, like later on, I'm like, oh, it's fucking great, and I'm an idiot. <sighs> yeah. Whoops. <laughs> oh, oh man, I always like if I nowadays if I hate some music, I almost feel like. I'm going to eventually really love it because <laughs> like, I hated country music. I hated so much music when I was younger. Um, and then, uh, you know, I end up loving it at some point, <laughs> you know, like um, I hated Neil Young for a long time. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it, um, like, I don't think it's juvenile to hate music, um, but I, I do think, uh, you know, it shouldn't be like a, a lifelong hate, you know, it should, or, or, you know, who knows, maybe it will be. But. Well, I mean, there's bands that I love. Like I, I mean, I despised the Pixies when I first heard them. I was like, this sucks. Really? Yeah. And like, and then wow. I like, it took me like, then I like, this sucks. I better listen to it again and make sure it sucks. And then I was like, Oh wait, yeah. this is really good. 
Yeah, it's so <laughs> funny, man. Like once I don't know why I was a- so mad about it. I was like, oh, I thought this was going to be good, and it sucks. Uh, the fact that I was an idiot kid. Well, almost like the you know it, the fact that it gets a reaction of hate or you know like right. uh, yeah, 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 is totally. uh, it, there's something that draws you back to it. Like, well, but at the same time, you know, like there was some music that I hated that I. I still don't understand why people like, you know? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, yeah. and I'm not going to name any names. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so just real quick, talk to me about playing with tortoise or as my, my good friend, Chris used to call them tortois. Tortois. Yeah. That's, <laughs> how they, that's how they uh, would say in, in France. Tortois if you're nasty. Um, tortois or tortoise. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, uh, I mean, it was it was really great. Like, it was so funny because amazing in the musicians, early 90s, very different than you know, not like interesting stuff. Not like a traditional rock band by any stretch of the imagination. Not at all. Yeah, it was funny because in the, I guess in the early nineties, you know, I liked, I liked PJ Harvey. I liked, um, I liked Stereo Lab, and I liked Tortoise. But those were the, probably the only the only like sort of current bands that I liked because I, I was discovering all this old music and there was, to me was a lot more exciting than a lot of the stuff that was happening. Um, and then I ended up playing in both tortoise and stereo lab. So it was like <laughs> a dream come true. <laughs> like, you know, hey, I love the out, first yeah. tortoise record. Yeah. So it's, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was great. It was great playing with them. And I knew I'd known Bundy and McIntyre for a long time, just through, because uh, they uh, put in time with, you know, Gaster del Sol and Bastro. Yeah, yeah. And um, so it was, uh, um, so they were like part of that family. Yeah, I think like Slint would come up, we'd stay at Bundy's place or McIntyre's place so, sometimes um, to Chicago. Uh, so it was, they were, they were familiar and I loved Tortoise. So it was, um, it was a great experience for sure. And I think the only reason, well, I started, when tortoise was doing other stuff or like was taking a break, that's when I was tour with stereo lab. And it, there was one point where after the stereo lab touring, um, stereo lab were like, they, we w- would like you to stay with us, but you know, oh, we know you're with tortoise too. So yeah. like, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. And I only, and I cho- I loved both bands, but I wanted to stay in Chicago. I didn't want to live in London. And then, that's a hell of uh, an ass, I, though. I mean, Jesus. I like, know. It's, it's like, <laughs> what, what a problem to have. Oh, Ginger and Marianne both want to do Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, hmm, okay. Like, cool. You you had both for a long time. Now you have to choose one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, right? it's like, what a problem to have. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, so, yeah. And, and then when I, the only reason I left Tortoise was, not not because of any musical thing at all, but because I just wanted to live, move back to Louisville. I didn't want to live in Chicago anymore. Like, um, and and also they were going to tour TNT for like a year, and I think I was just fried on touring. Like yeah. I, I just, yeah, I'm I'm really not the road warrior that I come off is that I am. You know, well, yeah. I like and, and and you've mentioned you know you and it's it's something where. You know, you've mentioned that, like, you know, being on stage isn't even necessarily your favorite thing. Like, I'm, all, like I said, I'm always amazed that you can play in such low light. Frankly, like, I think it looks amazing, but I'm like, I don't know how you <laughs> can see the fretboard. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I'm only comfortable. Like, I, my stage fright has always been bad. I think my stage fright was better when I first started because I was too oblivious to think about think about it. <laughs> but when now, but once I think in Tortoise, I played with my back turned all the time. Yeah, um, but it's also it's and I was and I did that in Stereo Lab, and, um, but both bands are sort of like, that's fine, you know, like it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it was t- it was totally fine. Like it didn't seem like uh, like a statement or anything. Yeah. But I remember there's uh, although I'm wearing a Aerial velvet Lab. underground shirt right now, so I guess that you know there are bands that did make that a statement. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I to me it was just stage fright and I just wanted to think about the music and not and tune everybody out. Like the fact that all these eyes might be looking at me like really made me uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, you know, like is there shit on my teeth kind of thing. Um, you know, like <laughs> is, yeah, did, did I accidentally pee on my okay. knee? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do I have a knee spot? Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it would just absurd, but like, you know, it's like um 
I, I've always had stage fright. And then I remember like with Ariel M when we were touring, like I was making a concentrated effort to start turning around. So I would face the drummer and then I would slowly face the bass player. Like is the tour went on, you know, after, um, you know what I mean? It was like after a period of years, I was slowly t- turning around and there was this one NME. I think I saved it. It's in storage or something where they said, David Pajos air, um, from Ariel M has gone from playing with his back to the audience to playing with his side to the audience. <laughs> and it just had a picture of me in profile. <laughs> I thought you going to say someone made like an animated gif of the shows over the years, <laughs> which also would be oh, good. Oh man. But the fact that would be good. But the fact they made a news yeah. article about it is also great. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I, I'm really comfortable when there's no lights on stage or to me, it's, it is really about the music or if I have my back to the audience, like that's, um, I just want to, I just want to focus on the music and I, I would love to be able to entertain and, and, and bring, uh, you know, and just engage the audience somewhat or like, cause I know a lot of band or a lot of audience members will be pissed when a band ignores them, you know, or like yeah. they didn't even say anything in between songs, those arrogant fucks, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, they're so and pretentious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, um, yeah, it's just, for for me it's not even about like trying to entertain it's just trying not to fuck up you know it's like i'm i'm just trying to get through the song and uh and i've got i th- feel like i still have stage fright i've just gotten really good at hiding it over the years like now i can fake confidence you know, or you know i i can tune it out once i start get playing, out of your head but, about it at least yeah yeah you know the uh, um, yeah when you when you're talking about yeah just there's a, I think it's a sailing term. Hold the angle, like so that the, uh, so that the, and you're if you're in a storm like this, the sail doesn't rip. Like you want to hold the angle. I think that's what it is. Right. Is is uh, is that how you feel about playing live or? Uh no, no. But it, I just think yeah. it's the cool sounding phrase. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I want to make a dumb joke, but I won't. But um, (laughs) I'll just leave it to your imagination. Yeah, sometimes I just say random shit, dude. It's it's fine. You don't need to react. Oh, it's great. I love it. Uh, Um, You know this, Jesus. Um, So okay, so 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 you you get off the road with Tortoise. Um, You do that. uh, Move back to Louisville. Uh, Yeah, move back to Louisville. There's the um, the li- the live from a shark cage record, right? Is that the that mm-hmm. the ones before? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And whatever mortal, whatever mortal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's thank you. I couldn't couldn't think of it was going to come to me eventually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so that that's no, I, a, that's a record that like really connected to a lot of people uh, in, in in my friend group and just like really kind of seemed to mean a lot to folks. What what was? Tell me about the recording of that record. Tell me about uh, those songs. Uh, um, man, I think that record was just, um, me being sort of, um, I just wanting th- the music that I make to more align with the music I, w- I was excited about. Cause I wasn't listening to like instrumental, um, post rock, you know, like I, I was, know. I was listening to the Everly brothers and like, uh, old, um, you know, old country and old Delta blues and stuff. And like that, that was the stuff that I, uh, I was really into. And I, I was into Cat Stevens, you know, and like, um, it, so it was like, uh, I wanted to just make music that was, uh, I guess sort of based on the, mm, not necessarily Kentucky folk music, but just like, uh, yeah, kind of like, um, the mythological Southern themes and stuff. Um, yeah, like when people and, think about like when they're they're glorifying like Appalachia and like you know yeah. songs songs of my people, you know. <laughs> that yeah, of, yeah. I don't know why I had to say it in an insincere voice, but yeah, that kind of thing. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's true. Like it's um, like that is the origins for a lot of music, and I just wanted to, and I liked. Yeah, I was just really into that then, and I wanted to make. I wanted to be excited about my own music, and it sort of had to be along those lines but i didn't want to ape it either like i didn't want to fake like i was like oh i just rolled out off i just came off the appalachian trail i lived in the smoky mountains (laughs) and i'm playing this i play this dulcimer that 
Um, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I didn't, I couldn't fake that I, my history. So I, um, I, I did it from my angle, you know, like my take on that stuff. Like there's one section, there's one song I listened to it recently. I hadn't heard it in forever, but I, I was like, Oh, that, that's cool. <laughs> like where inst- I, I left space for like a guitar solo or something. And, but I didn't, instead of a good, I didn't want to do a guitar solo. So, uh, I didn't want, I wanted it to be some surprising sound. And so I just got my car keys and just recorded jiggling my car oh, keys. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, and it sounds crazy. Like it's cause the song's about death and stuff. And like, it sounds like some skeleton dragging train, like chains. Um, yeah. It, it sounds really uh, ethereal and kind of like, what is that? It's crazy. Yeah. I, I think I overdubbed it a couple of times. Um, so, and, and like, uh, maybe not just car keys. It was other like metal things clanking together, but you know, like, I was, I was still, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it wasn't like, um, you know, it wasn't like I was trying to be like this authentic, uh, like make authentic folk music at all. You know, I just wanted to, that was the foundation for it. But like, it was, I, I wasn't going to d- deny my history either. Well, and time. you did that one, my culture. Yeah. You did that one song, um, the the other night on the uh, didn't ah uh, yeah that's right over Jordan yeah yeah and it's which is you know doesn't seem doesn't seem dated let's put it that way uh, yeah that's the beauty of that kind of music I think is that like it it's it uh, it's timeless you know like it could be it could be a new um, song or it could be a you know could be older than our granddads so yeah and it can kind of will sound old and and new and out of time all at the same time yeah which is cool i'm hoping yeah um <laughs> that's the but then <laughs> so that was the whole yeah that was the whole idea behind whatever mortal and that and and also like i was i was i always enjoyed singing like i was never good at it but i enjoyed it and like i was getting a lot of encouragement from will um to do it and he helped me with the record and tara jane o'neill played on it and Brit played drums on one, on one song. And, you know, it was, it was a really fun, uh, like it wasn't a total, like me alone in the studio or in my bedroom studio kind of thing. It was, it was, but it was, it was more collaborative. I feel like. Yeah. And Um, it's something where it just kind of seemed like, and it, 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 the, the feeling was relaxed while not sounding yeah. loose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think, I mean, I I was, I, I had just started recording uh, to hard drives and stuff then. And like it was, and I just, I still just treated it like a tape machine. Like, like nowadays I think it's normal to just put down a click track. Yeah. Um, and that's how the song starts. But like there, there's, there's no click tracks or anything. Like the, the finger pick guitar would be the, the pulse you know yeah. um so uh, man I, I i hope i'm not boring everybody no no not at all no no like, and, yeah. and, just, no, no, no. and there's, there's there's more there's more i want to get to um i do want to i, I want to talk about the the scream with me record yeah I, I really love that record that was actually um a bandmate played it for me on tour and i was like is this the misfits <laughs> it's like this is awesome. Oh, that's great. What is this? Uh, and you yeah. you told the story on on Renee show, and I heard it. And I don't necessarily want you to like repeat it exactly, but that wasn't something that was like you made with the intention of releasing it to the world. It was something that no. just kind of got passed around, just like it was to me. Like it was like hey, I'm gonna put this on. Oh, okay, what is exactly? It? Yeah. See, that's the power of like word of mouth again. Like that's how yeah. Spiderland got around. It was all. Um, yeah, it just it got passed around like people were turning on their friends onto it, and, um, and yeah, scream with we me with like that whole all those recordings were never meant to be heard uh, by anybody really. Like I, I did, it was I just um, those it was just like a lesson in songwriting. Like I I always liked uh, Glenn's like the way he wrote songs. Um, you know, I liked his melodies, his lyrics. They're all so catchy, um, but I felt like a lot of the like. Uh, people didn't realize that because like there's so much uh, the campiness with the misfits. Is, yeah. Yeah. Is analyze the lyrics when you've got, you know, this, I mean, cause and they leaned into it like with the whole, yeah. you know, 
like the with the the devil locks and like the <laughs> the yeah, outfits and everything. Yeah. They leaned into it, but it's it's also I agree with you. I think it's also like oh, that's actually a really good turn of phrase there. That's like oh, that's a yeah. really good you know kind of like a good vulgar line that's just like very elegantly vulgar. Yeah, yeah. It's like he could he could be poetic and obscene at the same time, and like he could be uh, he could be ridiculous. Like I turned into a Martian, <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> um, totally. and and I I found that like those those kind of lyrics like like people's ears perk up when they hear these bizarre lyrics. Like if you were just singing about like being dumped by your girlfriend, like your ears aren't going to really perk up unless it's like really well written, you know, like, um, but if somebody's singing about turning into Martian, you're like, what the fuck is he talking about? You know? yeah. <laughs> like, well, totally. And especially when you, when you have, um, when you have, and especially when in that format, right. The, yeah. Yeah. When it's like a singer songwriter, like a v- vocals and acoustic guitar, um, you don't expect to hear lyrics like that. And so and it's, it's a and little, when you hear like a line, like, you know, when new creatures rape your face is sort of like, like, Oh, right. Oh, yeah. oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, it, and it's, uh, and it's like stuff that you may not even notice yeah, when you're listening that? to the misfits. I Why? Why? Yeah. I didn't know those were the words. Jesus. Jesus. That's, that's rough. Yeah. <laughs> but did you know way. that the, did you know that the pre slint band Maurice toured with Sam Hain? Like, um, you, I, you mentioned that I to me, you? and I thought that was amazing. And I think I pressed you for some details on it, which I guess I should probably do right now. I mean, like, like what was that? That's you know being a part of like punk history, pretty much, right? I mean, I mean it was it was yeah, it was again like just being near one of my heroes. Like, I was a huge Misfits fan. I was a huge Sam Hain fan. Yeah. And then we got to play like when I say tour, it was like maybe five shows with them, but it was in the Midwest. Um, opening for them and traveling together, like eating at the same places and stuff. Um, so it was great, you know, like I, and you know, Will Oldham came with us. That was before he played music. But he, Maurice, that was, uh, Sean Garrison was, was uh, uh, did vocals on that, right? Yeah. Remember? Sean, okay. Sean yeah. was the singer. Yeah. 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 Another amazing, <laughs> uh, Louisville talker. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, like, uh, so like Glenn's music has been a part of my life. And so anyway, like I wanted to record, I just wanted to dissect because I was writing songs for a new record. I wanted to, I was, I want to just tear apart somebody else's songs, like deconstruct it and put it back yeah, together. Totally. So I understood it. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, and so I just, I was ha- like kind of house sitting, I guess I was couch surfing and the people that lived there were out of town. Um, and uh and they had a tape machine and i um and i just recorded you know these you know what became scream with me and it was it was just uh yeah it was just like a songwriting exercise like learn from uh, someone you admire and uh and i just left the tape in there and you know i ended up getting my own apartment and stuff like uh and just forgot all about the tape and uh i think i guess it had gotten passed around like she'd heard it and was really surprised and and burned a CD of it. And then that got passed around. And then I, I had to do like a, I needed, a, I was getting a promo photo done or something. And the photographer was like, Oh, I heard, you know, your misfits song covers. And I was like, what, how did you hear that? <laughs> like, um, cause I had not even thought about them. Right. And why he, would you? It, yeah. You weren't setting it for release. You were just doing it for the fuck of it. Right. Yeah. And I, and I had forgotten about because I, I list le- I I didn't even know where the tape was or, or I didn't know it existed. I thought by now she had taped over it, and um, uh, she, uh, he was like, "Yeah, I was shooting like Sean Marshall the other day, and she was playing it during the shoot, like, and like, and that's and then eventually like a friend wanted to release it on vinyl and stuff. So it was like the like that's what I mean by like people will fi- the audience will find the music like right. you almost. Um, uh, um, yeah, if you, I mean, and to me, that's the purest recording I've ever made because I didn't intend for anyone to ever hear it, you know? Um, and it wasn't even for me. I was just trying, I was, it was just like a study, you know, it yeah. was like if you were, if you were going to, if you were, uh, going to copy like, I don't know, Picasso's because you wanted to do your own painting. Yeah, I, I um, want to practice my, uh, you know, my, what they call figure what do they call it? Figure yeah, your, painting? Your figure that... drawing or yeah. figure painting. Yeah, the... I don't know why that sounds wrong to me, but 
Sure, we'll stick with it. Yeah, because <laughs> it sounds like finger painting. <laughs> yeah, it, it does sound yeah. like finger painting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to practice, practice my, my finger, finger drawings. Yeah. My, my yeah. <laughs> It's like, is he drawing fingers? Is he drawing with his fingers? Like, what's he, what's he doing? <laughs> uh, um, so, okay. Um, well, and I must have moved pretty quickly because I think the tour I heard it on, it was like summer of that year. So if you recorded that earlier that year, must have must have moved along pretty what, quickly. What year was that? Because I don't even remember what year I recorded it. Uh, 2009, it was, I think, if I remember correctly. Oh, I, I think they, I did it in like 2004, man. I think it was... 2004 oh, well then it didn't move very fast it. at all never mind <laughs> no it didn't like it was it was a definitely like a slow burn <laughs> oh, uh, what i just said forget about it and it's exactly yeah because the, <laughs> the only reason i remember is because um yeah just like because of life events in new york that were happening then sure sure um, and and um and that actually reminds me that we haven't talked about the ai as at all uh yeah i, I think it's it's important to to mention Nick and Brian and Karen uh, in regards to you, because I think that's it. That's a relationship that maybe most people don't necessarily know if they aren't like Paho super fans necessarily. Right. I mean, that, I mean, it was like, a, it was a shock and, and like one a life changing move when uh, Nick asked me if I wanted to play with them on tour. Um, I think, yeah, I think they had somebody, um, but like two weeks before the first show, like they realized like she wasn't going to work out or something. And, and so they were in, <laughs> so I had to learn all their, all the songs for their set, like in, in two weeks. And, and, and it was, it was really rushed in that sense, but it, it, it was like a perfect, to me, it felt perfect as a fit right away. Like, I don't know why I wasn't better friends with them before this. Like I almost felt stupid for not hanging out with them <laughs> when, and when we were all in New York yeah, at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Um, cause, uh, uh, yeah. Cause like they became like, like I do, I still feel like they're like a, like a surrogate family for me or, um, you know, uh, yeah. I, even though I don't talk, I talk to Nick probably the most. Um, but I, I still feel like a, like a, like a psychic bond at all times with them, you know, like it's really weird. Uh, just how, Sometimes you just have a deep connection with people that way, though. You know, yeah, you and a lot it. of it's, yeah, a lot of it's unspoken. Like you just un, there's like a, this, and that's almost deeper because it's an unspoken understanding. I feel like, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, that was great. Um, that was 2009 to 2010, and then, and then I did uh, Interpol, Interpol exactly. for a year, and I then I took a year off to. Um, uh, I guess to destroy my marriage without realizing it. <laughs> it was supposed to recon- it was supposed to patch things up, but I ended up, I don't know how what happened. Uh, but, um, it turned, turned out a little different, as it turns out. Yeah, it, yeah, it turned out different. And then I went out with the Yaz again for like two. Th- um, I guess it was two th- all of 2013, and then out with Slint again. Like we had the Slint reunions happening too. Um, yeah, which it's all confusing. Man. Yeah, yeah. Well, the timeline doesn't have to be super linear, dude. It's fine. And, and the um, it, it's funny. I actually saw, <laughs> actually saw the San Francisco show. But I should say I saw the last song. Oh, really? Half of the San Francisco show. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, and, but, um, and there's a really good reason for that. It's, it's kind of long and involved. But uh, my best friend, I actually told it on this show. Uh, <laughs> years ago like whenever that was which was like you know for a long time ago but basically my best friend that i kind of learned to do punk rock with and moved out with and just you know lived most of my life with for the longest times i I had lost touch with him but he died Uh. and we there was a not really a proper service there was more like a disorganized bunch of people at the beach with like fires and uh you know like whatever uh that kind of stuff but it was it was it was heavy like it was it was something where we had a complicated relationship and you know it was uh it it was a heavy night and like i had but i had bought tickets to see you guys play for the longest time i'm like oh yeah it'd be cool to see those guys play that'd be awesome uh without knowing of course that not only my friend would pass away but that you know i'd be attending a, a, a wake that night a right. weird wake a wake that was sort of like oh this is cool but 
kind of like conflicted too. I'm like, this is kind of stupid yeah. also, <laughs> but also it feels bad, but it's kind of like kind of probably what he would wanted. And, uh, and, and this was the same night, that the same night. Played? And then I just suddenly got it in my mind. I was like, we're going to go to this Slint show. And if I can just like see like one song, like I'll feel good about all this. And I don't know why I like kind of set that intention in my mind, but that's what I decided. Right. And no, I get, that makes sense to me. I could see that happening. And because for me, that would have kind of like turned the night around and kind of get rid of like this, this bad stuff that was like circling around my head. And this is Ocean Beach in San Francisco that we were at. And then like it was the film works actually really isn't super far away. So we got there and it was the last and I, I walked in and it was it was it was you guys just started playing Good Morning Captain. It was like the last song. And, oh, wow. And I was like, huh. Yeah. Wow. That's and, perfect timing. Yeah, yeah. And and I I told this whole story like way better like right after it happened on the show and it's but it's been like years ago and I, I don't remember. And I actually didn't even think about it in, until then. Uh yeah. but it was really cool, man. It was, it was really special and it was um you know, it it was awesome to see you guys play that one song. Like I I Yeah. It was I was I so mean, heavy with emotion about a bunch of stuff that I couldn't really tell you that much about it necessarily, but it, it was Right. I mean, it sounds it sounds like a a weirdly um, apt song for that moment. Um, <laughs> it was very fitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the <laughs> and and of all songs, it's it's actually to me. I don't. We didn't always end with that either. Like there, I was afraid you were going to say, and it was like some song off Tweez I'd never even noticed <laughs> before. Like because um, <laughs> you, oh, you know, guys, you guys did a King Kong cover, and I didn't even heard that band before. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was um, because we did we did play. Sometimes we'd start off with Good Morning Captain and then Breadcrumb Trail, and it was like if you showed up late to the show, you were like, "What the fuck?" (laughs) It it bummed people out. I mean, we stopped doing that, but um, you know, because we always changed the set every night. Like it's until it sort of fell into a a rhythm that that felt good. Um, But like, yeah, when we were experimenting with starting with Good Morning Captain, that was bumming people out. Like, I was afraid you were going to tell me that. (laughs) No, no, it it was it was great. Like again, like remember what I said earlier about like how sometimes stuff happens in life, and you're like, yeah, okay, if this was scripted in a movie, I would call bullshit. But that that was uh, it was a (laughs) special and unique moment. It was a really cool. And actually, had I hadn't thought about it for years, so I don't know. Yeah whatever we talked about that suddenly made me start thinking about myself and that. Well, I, I think cause I, I, for, I forgot to even mention the slant reunions. Um, and oh, so that's, that's right. Yeah. Cause that's I was going to say slant out. reunion. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's gotta be crazy. Right. After coming back, like, you know, like what you guys were like 19, like how old were you like when that, when you did that? Like, I mean, Oh man, I can't even remember. Uh, I think I was the oldest. I was probably 20. Um, Went for Spiderland. Yeah, one foot. But we started in. Yeah, I know. (laughs) (laughs) And and we started in '86. Like that's another thing about Slint. I think people think of us as a '90s band, but we were already broken up by '90. Right. And um, we were an '80s band. Like we were a late '80s band. (laughs) Um, uh, So, yeah, it's it's funny to think that. um, Yeah like what was popular when we were making that music. But um, anyway, the, um, the Slint reunions were super weird. The first we had one in 2005 and then one in 2007 and then two, 2014, I think was the last one. Yeah. That's that's, and that's the one that I saw. That was uh cause that was okay. Clay past. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's uh yeah, that was, uh, and I think that's the last, uh, yeah, I think that's the last big tour that I've done. Um, it's been a long time, I guess, because, um, yeah, I don't know if you want to race through the other years, but like, uh, oh, yeah, I skipped over at, a bunch of shit while we were bullshitting about whatever. Um, I, yeah, but, I don't, yeah, I don't know what we skipped over. Like, um, um well, I mean, there was, there was, oh, all Zwan, that, yeah. there was, there was Zwan, there was the numbered EPs that you did with Pop M, which I always thought was a great, great shit yeah yeah that was my audio tour diaries because i was so busy with zwan at the time like yeah. i could only like i only had these brief moments at home to to record my own stuff um so i just had the audio tour diary series where it was mostly songs i wrote on the road and then just came home and record 
Which is saying a lot. I, I mean, that's I find it almost impossible to to write anything. Uh, really, yeah, it's really, it's really tough. But the, like, uh, like Zwan was a different style of touring, you know, totally. where there's a lot of sitting around. Like, <laughs> so, so that's so that's a change up, right? That's a, that's a that's a, a to- that's not necessarily a different world, but you know, it's a, it was it's a different. different world. Yeah. Okay. It, it it was like, and I and I wanted it because I was. Uh, I remember, like, I was in L.A mastering whatever mortal so it must have been i don't know what year that was 2002 or something that sounds about right. um and uh <laughs> or maybe 2001 yeah 2001. somewhere around there yeah, it's like, um according, according to Wikipedia, I, uh, which is we, as we all know cannot be incorrect so yeah they're always right <laughs> um the yeah i was mastering whatever mortal and they were auditioning bass players like matt and Billy and Jimmy and uh and I was talking to Matt and I was like I was joking I was like uh I was like oh you're you're playing with Corgan like let me in on that shit I think I said those were my exact words and, <laughs> and I was I was like half joking but yeah. like I I I went like I actually was like I think like six months previous I was like man I it seems like I tour and I play the same venues no matter what country I'm in. Like I, yeah. I'm playing the same places and it's cool. Like I'm happy to do this, but I'm like, I wonder what it's like on the, like I'm sort of bored at the same time. Like I wonder what it's like on the other side. Like I've heard all these sto- like horror stories about major labels and, um, you know, being in a big band and all this stuff. Like, but like, but I have no direct experience with it. So, yeah. um, so I was like, there was this curiosity, like, what would it be like to play other venues? And, um, uh, and so like Matt was like, yeah, you should, you should come over. Like we're auditioning. They auditioned like 26 bass players and didn't like any of them. And then, uh, Matt and I was like, ah, I don't want to audition. Like, I've never done that. Like I, I'm, I'm not doing that. And then, um, he was like, we'll just come over to swim. Cause we're, st- we're, he's like, we're staying at the Chateau Marmont and, and, it's a great pool. And so I showed up at it, like where he said his room was, I showed up in my swim, swim trunks and like, um, a towel <laughs> and brought my own towel. And, uh, and Corgan answers the door. Uh, and he's like, Hey, come in. And, um, there, he's telling me about the band and he wants it to be this positive thing and all this stuff. And, and I, and I just pick up a guitar that's lying around. And I was like, I know Billy thinks he's a great guitar player. Um, and uh, I was like, I'm going to do all my Malmsteen licks, you know, like, so I started shredding, you know, like, I was like, like, do these arpeggios now. I'm like, all oh, my guitar center middly, middly, moves, middly. you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I remember like Billy and uh, Jimmy looking at each other, like, holy shit. Like, I'm, it was like, <laughs> it was so perfect. And then I, and then I never ended up, I remember leaving and being like, fuck, I never swam. Like I never got in the pool. Yeah, you but dressed, apparently, dressed like, up to go to the pool and you didn't even swim. Yeah, yeah. I was still in my swimsuit, <laughs> holding my towel, leaving. And I was like, God damn it. Like I thought it was a failed mission, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. cause I was only there for the pool. I was, I w- really was not thinking about that. This was my audition, you know, until afterwards, Matt was like, yeah, they want you to play bass. Like. I was like, oh, well, that's cool. You know, <laughs> like yeah. I didn't because I didn't realize it was the audition. I thought I, was, I really was there to swim. But like, that's how oblivious um, I am. <laughs> so you, uh, you see, you thrang your way into uh, into Zwan just to yeah, rip and licks. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I was it was more just to like show off and be like, you think you're good. Like, can you do this? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. hey, uh, F you, Baldy, was, check the shit. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and he is a great solo, like he's great at soloing in, a, in his own way, you know, like, and it's not the technique shit, like, cause my, my stuff was just tech, technical bullshit, you know? Um, but it was, uh, um, but it was enough, you know, I, at least I, I've never had to audition and I, I, I feel good about that, you know? Um, but like, uh, yeah, so I ended up in Zwan and then. And then you started playing up, with Pause, and Pause is uh, awesome. And Pause yeah. ended up, yeah, joining and taking over the yeah. bass because we played a couple shows without her. Um, and then, uh, and then she ended up playing bass, and I moved to third guitar. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Never enough guitars. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it was cool because I felt like I had to come up with parts that. Um, were not bar chords and like rocking, you know, like almost like I played a 12 string a lot. Yeah. Um, there were more sort of jangly. I was, I was trying to go for a birds kind of thing. Um, but it was, um, 
Yeah, that was a, that was that. a definite. I mean, you played yeah. that, uh, you played that twelve string on the Sin Eater. I mean, that's that's a uh, that oh, you, that's right. You can make like all kinds of amazing non birdsy sounding songs with like twelve string stuff. You know? Yeah, that's I forgot about that. Um, but but yeah, so that was this one experience. It was a couple years. Um, did we you get a record? You know, did you enjoy? It? It. I don't think I've ever directly asked you this. Did you did you enjoy that time? Uh, you know, I enjoyed it because it, in the sense that it was the experience I was looking for, like I want, I wanted to see what life was like on the other side, that other side of the music world. Yeah. And I, I learned it and it was as shitty as everyone told me. <laughs> so I was more than happy to go back to the same venues. Like I was like, Oh my God, the same venue in in Bordeaux, you know, like yeah, I great. love this. Yeah. Place. <laughs> yeah. It's like now I, I've never missed you more than I am right now. Um, uh, so it was, um, you know, it was, it was, and I don't think like the whole, that whole world music world is shitty. I think just that particular circumstance and group of people was pretty, was, was born to implode. You know? yeah. um, uh, okay. Real quick. I, I, I swore to myself, I was going to ask you about dead child. Cause I love that. Oh, okay. ba- I love that band and I forget yes. about it constantly, but I freaking love yeah. that band. It's so it. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, yeah, I think um, I, even, I've, I think I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned to you, but I, I yeah I play that I used to play that record like all the time, and I busted it loose one time on tour, and Tony was like, "Is this Dead Child?" I'm like, "Yeah," because he like knows some of those guys too, because Louisville. Oh uh, right, oh, and, that's like, great. It was just a very nice moment, but yeah, tell me about how Dead Child came to be. I mean, it was actually a name. It was like because um, Todd Cook played bass on the first Slint reunion, yeah. and he's a Louisvillian. Uh, you know, he played in. Gosh, shipping news and June of forty four. And... Oh yeah, uh, uh, Crane, right? Uh... Uh, he may have played with Crane at one point, but Todd Cook is. Uh, you're thinking of John Cook, uh, who oh. played in Crane. Yeah, my bad. Todd Cook's a yeah. Too many cooks. Hey. Yeah, I know. Too many, <laughs> too, many <laughs> too many chefs cooks. in the kitchen. <laughs> too many cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. But he, like, we were sitting in the van. I think he was stoned, and he just t- turned to me and was like, "You know what? We have a great band name." And I'm, I'm like, "What's that?" He's like, "Dead Child," and we both just busted out laughing, you know. <laughs> and then, and then, like, I just had it in my mind that Todd and I had to form a band called Dead Child, and uh, and we both were into metal, and um, so we wanted to embrace our metal. Uh, with that band and uh it was but it really started like that like with that with him wanting to um coming up with the name first i mean it's not da- it's an audacious name and as far as i mean it, but it's also something like i mean could you imagine if you started that band now you know? yeah yeah it's yeah it's a, it's a fucked up name for sure <laughs> yeah Wolf. Uh, um i mean but I guess I'd heard, you know, there of punk names. There's a lot of like fucked up punk names. Oh, there like, still is. Um, I mean, a, a friend of mine uh, just start, <laughs> started yeah. a new band with uh, uh, her Chelsea Wolf, who plays in her band. Uh, it's called Mrs. Piss. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah. And it's I mean, so good, but it's like, whoa, that is such a harsh yeah. joke of a band name. Like, but but it's they're so oh, good. Man. That's the thing is like I think because I grew up in that scene where like the the Meat Men had that EP that was called Cripple Cripple Children Suck. <laughs> you know, it's like like <laughs> that's right. And, I forgot about that. Yeah. I mean, Dead Kennedys had this. Um, didn't they have a song about killing children or like? Oh, um, uh, uh, sh- I can't remember. But it's like it's, it was like making like really off color jokes yeah, it was, was very, part of the humor. I kill children. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's. Uh, I kill children. Yeah. No wonder so, we couldn't think of it. <laughs> yeah, it was too. It was like it couldn't be more too like, obvious, yeah. um, obvious than that. And like in Dead Child, like I felt like it was on the same page. Like, and when MDC was around, like it was millions of dead cops, or it could be millions of dead children, or like it had a million different <laughs> names. So um, I feel like the like Dead Child was a harsh name, but like it it wasn't any more harsh than anything that had come before in my opinion like it was just i just i just thought it was you know it was fucked up um but yeah so we did that we um touch and go like put out our record and we did some tours for that and um 
and then I mean I guess I'm the our, target audience for it because I thought it was fucking awesome but like I, I was like oh wow this is rad because oh no that's great I love when people drop you know it's like I talked or Britt mentioned recently Britt Walford mentioned that he had been listening to Dead Child lately um, which I think is really cool it's just, like uh, just to listen to it you know yeah. it is one of those records like I feel like if you're in if you're in that kind of mood, it's perfect. It's, you know? it's, it's, it's a perfect kind of record for a perfect kind of mood and very, very yeah. different than like, you know, than some, some of the other stuff that you've done. Like, I mean, for instance, I think Brooklyn yeah. rises is good driving music, driving in during the rain music, I think. Yeah. I love that. Like when there's like a, yeah, I definitely have like my rain road trip albums, you know? And, um, Oh, that's an honor that, that a Brooklyn rises is one of them. Um, yeah, man, but, it's a, it's great driving in the rain music. I'll stand by that. Yeah, I have like records I listen to when it's like when it or it doesn't snow here, but like in New Jersey when it would be snowing, you know, like um, I've listened to Washington Phillips or something like some uh, like old blues dude. Um, so yeah, it's like uh, I I think Dead Child. If you want to, if you're if you want to like hit the accelerator and like <laughs> and you're just pissed go. off at yeah. the world and yeah. you just want everyone to hear what you're listening to at the red light like yeah that's, some, that's like, some drive angry music in a, in a good way yeah <laughs> yeah yeah totally <laughs> it's like and it there's no it doesn't fuck around it just starts off like um with the rocking you know like the it, um, yeah it just comes so, in ribbon for sure yeah um but then yeah that that ended because you know touch and go folded like around after that record came out like not too long after and I'm not then saying there's a cause and effect but no. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> we were we were the nail in the coffin yeah. for sure Turns out somebody <laughs> did bet the devil their head and it was Corey. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and um uh, yeah and, and it just yeah it just kind of faded out um and yeah what did, what did i do after that uh I guess yeah, there, there was still slint stuff happening, and um, and then yeah, I guess recently was the household gods, which I feel like you could speak better about than I can because I'm so I'm still the, the same oblivious dude that I always have been. I mean, yeah, but I mean, I feel I feel weird about being like, hey, buddy, here's here's my show, here's my you know. Here, have, oh, no. Here's the hat. Here's the excellent in bro- excellence in broadcasting chair, which is something Rush Limbaugh sells. Did you know that? Really? Yeah. No way. Or like, I think it's, I think it's, yeah, EIB excellence in broadcast. I, I was like, this fucking guy, really. I don't know Holy why Matt, shit. Matt had brought that up, but no, no. But it's, um, yeah, no. I you don't want to make us feel we like bring a... it up, but like, I mean, it is really soon tomorrow. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not why we're doing it, but. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. And, and it does seem like it's gonna, um, you know, to me, like I associate that experience and that recording with, with Lauren now, you know, who, yeah. it's hard not to, um, yeah. So I feel like I don't, I don't have any problem, uh, bringing it up or talking about it because I feel like it's a way of, uh, just sort of honoring her, you know? Well, what I liked about that was it was, you know, you have all these people that are just awesome badass musicians and we just kind of got together with no expectations about anything and uh, yeah you know what came out was pretty interesting i think for me it kind of sounds a little bit like what you think that would sound like and a little bit like not at all what you would sound that sound like and it's, it's right kind of i was really in my head personally at the time about a lot of stuff and especially music stuff and it kind of helped me just remember like oh yeah like you don't have to worry about any of that stuff because it doesn't matter and part of it's just kind of dealing with you know the fact that like i didn't even realize at the time but i was i was like oh i'm the only one that really knows everybody and so everybody's kind of getting to know each other like during the course of the recording and it's such a cool place how how can you not be super creative and awesome at rancho de la luna it's such a such a nice spot Uh, yeah it's like it's in the air there like um you know i was i was trying to think about how Cause like, I guess people, I get asked to do stuff and usually, um, I guess when I was, when I was younger and, um, had less commitments, like I, I would 
kind of play with anybody or it's, I was just jam all the time. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. But that, now that, now that I'm older and older, have, you got family. Yeah. 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 I have kids and stuff. And like, uh, I don't usually do it. Like I don't usually play with, especially with people I don't really know that well. Um, but when you asked me, I remember like, cause I, you know, I'd had a different, I, I don't even want to say it was difficult because it was, it was all like, it, it was all like this long ass adventure. Like, and adventures don't have to always be good, you know, like, um, like I, I had a suicide attempt in 2015. I had a motor, a, like a, you know, yeah. a motorcycle accident where I was supposed to have my leg amputated in 2016. I was in a wheelchair for the next two years. Um, I'd relocated to LA, you know, like it was, uh, a lot had happened and, and I was actually still just getting out of the wheelchair. Um, I, I think, yeah, when you asked me, you told me about it, and I and I, part of the reason I agreed to do it was because I just wanted to get back into music, like playing with humans and like um, get get back into music again. Yeah. Um, well, and that, it this sounded like pressure, a great way to do it, right? I mean, and there was no pressure. <laughs> like no yeah, pressure it was. <laughs> it was perfect. You know, it was like um, uh, musicians that I, re- I knew were were great and that I respected, and and that. Uh, and it was going to be on a, yeah, it was like, whatever happens, happens. Like there was no, if we never release it, that's fine. Totally. You know? And like, that, that, and, was, that was the mindset. Cause the, Cause the mindset was sort of like, well, if this ends up being nothing, whatever, it's just a cool adventure. And like, you know, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> but I bet yeah. it's going to be cool. And it, I think it's cool. Yeah. And if, if even if it's only one thing cool happened, you know, like the, it was, it's just that, yeah, you made it seem, um, and it was like, just like there were no expectations and, and it was perfect for me at that time for sure. And, uh, and it was like that, like we got there. I think I, I feel a little guilty because I, I don't feel like because I was rusty with um, just playing with people. Like I, I didn't have a lot to contribute. I feel no, like, no, um, you've, come on, grow up. Yeah, okay. But I mean, I no, like, no, no, I feel like fine. if I had been more, more uh, like just playing more like i i would have been like okay i have these three riffs that work together like um well i think you know part part of the thing that made it cool was also part of the things that made initially potentially good anxiety inducing which is like we didn't walk in with any music you know it was yeah yeah like write the write the song at the kitchen table in the morning you know be recording it by afternoon and it's uh you know i'm not yeah i'm not gonna say that I was I was like super zen about all of it. I definitely had like, oh my god, we got to write some songs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like no, no. After day four and five or something, it was like, okay, like uh, we got to start pulling some stuff out here. But I mean, the last um, the last day, rest in power and shine theory both got got written that morning, and it was it was like, oh no, this is. And then like I definitely hit I definitely hit a moment. It, like I almost feel like a like, marathon running. They say like you hit like a you level up or whatever. I can't remember what the phrase is, but it's sort of like yeah, right. Oh yeah, I could do this another week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? Oh, I know. <laughs> on the last day or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly. It really felt like that. Like by the time we were yeah on the last day, I felt like we just warmed up and we we're just yeah. hitting our stride. Like, um, but again, if you're the but, Rolling Stones in a castle, that must be nice. But yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> At a certain yeah. point, Dave Ketchin's gonna kick, kick you the fuck out. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like people should just listen to it, should just hear it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm with you. I think that the record is pretty much uh, permanently attached to the idea of Lauren Canyon and NLK, and, and it's uh, My, it, it's yeah. nice that, that – I, I, I'm glad it's a good record because since it's the last thing that she did, it's uh, you know it makes it kind of heavy in a very different way. Totally, yeah, yeah. You know, I definitely wanted to make. Uh, I was like, I hope I don't think we blew it. I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I think I you know I think she it's really would be, good. She actually. would love I think this she would, record. I think we should be fucking pumped. And like, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm super glad we did it. And. Yeah, it's unlike any record I've ever made for sure, and it's yeah, it's creation for the act of creation. There's nothing wrong with that. Definitely, yeah. I I do want to say because I've never directly addressed this with you, but I'm glad you're alive, man. 
Oh, thank you so much. I am too. <laughs> I mean, I really am because, uh, um, man, I've had so many. Yeah, I'm, I'm just at the. You know, at the time, like when it happened, I remember. Uh, well, I re- I'm just going to say it because I I don't really have any. Um, I hope it's not triggering for people or anything, but like I don't. I'm not. I don't really feel like I have many secrets at all anymore, but like, uh, you know, I I hung myself from a tree and, uh, you know, and I was actually like jumped and was hanging. And uh, I remember when I, I, anyway, I had some crazy near death experience that still, that I, I only, (laughs) I don't have any secrets, but I feel like that's something I only talk about with friends, close friends. But like um, the, uh, I remember when they cut me down, like cops cut me down. Like, um, I, my first thought was like, fuck, I am still here. This, I can't even do this right. You know, like, um, I was so pissed. Like I was like, everything's going to be so much worse now. Like I just really fucked up even worse. Like I was so mad for like the first, maybe seven or eight hours afterwards. Um, and, uh, and then it was like I did a complete 180. Like I just, it was like something just changed completely where I was like, I am so lucky that it didn't, you know, that I made, that I survived this, you know? Um, uh, yeah. And, and I, cause it, yeah, it's like, as I really don't feel like I have any problems. I, you know, like I'm like any problems that I have are like, they're not really that big of a deal because I'm breathing. I have my health, you know, like I, I, my kids are doing well. I, I have loved ones and I'm loved and I give love, you know, like I, I I'm here to experience um, stuff that I never would have been. So I'm stoked, you know, even when things are really shitty, I'm just stoked to hear, you know, to be here to experience the shitty, you know? Um, uh, So, yeah like um uh yeah thank you like i'm yeah I'm i mean that's I as happy to... as anyone to be here <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean you know me i'm captain jokester but i got nothing no, no jokes there at all i'm just glad you're alive dude yeah oh thank I'm you i'm glad i know you and i'm glad i'm glad you did the show and uh it's a, it's always a pleasure talking to you i'm glad we did the record i'm, I'm, I'm sort of had you on years ago i don't know why the fuck i didn't i don't know like I'm... yeah what's up with that <laughs> <laughs> I was I was gonna say something, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I uh, it's 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 I, I I forget obvious things. I mean, it took me so long to have Dale on, dude. Like, I mean, like it's, yeah. I just forget obvious things sometimes. But uh, I, I, I'm super you, glad you came on. You got to get Brett Ralph, man. Um, he's been on. He's <laughs> oh yeah. I've had Brett on. Yeah, I had him on the first day, but uh, it was a while ago. Uh, I got to hear that. Yeah, he should be. He should be. I got to hear man. that one. Um, but. Uh, last question. I mean, you've heard the show. You know, I, I asked the thing at the end, which is uh, just why do you do what you do? Um, uh, see, I feel like I, I'll have a long-winded answer for that. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, the way I'm taking the question is like, why? Why do I? Uh, like, why am I a musician? Um, and I, and I, I know that that's not necessarily what you the question entails, but um, like. Uh, like I, you know, like being, being a musician was never a career choice. Like, um, it was just by default I had to like, uh, and because number one, it was the only thing I liked. It was like the only thing I was interested in. Um, and I'd had some shitty jobs, but I was actually making more money from playing music. So it was like a financial, it made more <laughs> sense. Like I could, I could get off food stamps if I, um, you know, right. if I played, played music. Um, so it was like, um, it was, it, and it was, it was like, yeah, it was like what I never chose to be a musician. It was just like, that was all I ever, you know, it's all I did and it was all I ever wanted to do. And then when I realized I could make a, like, um, somewhat of a living from it, like I, I was like, well, I should just do this full time. And then after that it was like when, uh, you know, I really did go full time and, you know, it was early nineties, I think when I was, um, it wasn't a decision to be a musician, but when I was a kid, when I got my first guitar, like I didn't, talk to people <laughs> like like i would practice nine hours a day um 
every day. Like, uh, and to me, that was just enough to get by. Like if I could play more, like I would have, uh, so, you know, like it, this is, I, I feel like it's, uh, uh, I, I, I do what I do is like, uh, because I need to breathe, you know, <laughs> I need to eat and I need water. So that's, and I need music. So like, that's pretty much why I do what I do. <laughs> I guess that's a long winded answer. It's fine. This is a long winded show. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, thanks so much, brother. It's, it's always good to hear your voice. And, uh, uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Stay safe. And, um, yeah, probably talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. We can do all this again. <laughs> oh, we know that's next week. Okay, no, no, well, yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow anyway. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, a week from tomorrow. Yeah, a week yeah. from tomorrow. <laughs> uh, oh, all, man. Yeah, all, all the love, all the best, and yeah, I guess I yeah. guess that's it. I guess that's this is me ending the show now. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, have a great night. You too, man. All right, bye-bye. There he goes. Mr. David Paho. Mr. Paho. Over Jordan by Papa M. That was my guest. Mr. David Paho. It's a great tune. He's a great guy. Uh, that was a good time. Thanks for hanging in there. That's uh. Is this thing on? I actually wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if we were going to talk about household gods. I just I feel really weird about that, but I do want everyone to hear the record. Uh, but I don't know why I feel self conscious about that, but I love it. Hope you guys like it too. Household gods at bandcamp dot com. Household gods dot com. Uh, Paho's got a site. Oh, Paho's got a site. I believe it's just davidpaho dot com. P-A-J-O. And uh, he's on all the social media, Instagram. Uh, you know. He's on the band camps. Oh, all right. So. The name of the show is Conan Neutron's Protonic Reversal. Thank you very much for listening to it. This show airs on radionope.com Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. Signing off. Mr. and Mrs. America, all the ships at sea. Podcast at radioneutron.com or protonacommercial.com or wherever you find your podcasts. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding. I've got 50,000 watts of power. If you want to get the episode sooner, patreon.com slash protonic reversal. One dollar a month gets you everything you need. The, uh, the average cost is like four cents or <laughs> something along those lines, but... But the show's always free. Thanks for liking the shows and spreading word out and all that stuff. <sighs> Stay safe out there. Raise your fist up. But take it easy.
any color at all. Welcome to my top ten. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. The last what? Leaves the transmitter. Circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? It's almost like a, you know, like a dial-up phones actually sound really good compared to, you know, cell phones. But um, yeah, landlines. It almost <laughs> dial-up. Yeah, yeah, la- yeah. Sorry, <laughs> lazy. Fifty-six k speed. I remember, dude. I was, dude. Yeah, I remember it very well. Get off the phone oh, line. Gosh. 
<laughs> I'm oh, almost yeah, done downloading the picture. <laughs> yeah, I know. 